an ordinary warm day, of which there are many in a year. The sun warms all living things with its rays. Mischievous sun bunnies also get into the building of the majestic temple in the Gothic style. A grand event is about to take place in the building. The wedding of two people who apparently love each other. Or maybe not so much. We will find out about it later. The bride in a white dress walks to the altar. There near the cathedral, behind which the priest stands, her future husband, a tall black-haired guy in an expensive gray suit, is already waiting for the girl. The bride is proud and confident. From a formal point of view, this is an impeccable, thought-out ducal wedding. The bride, a dark-haired girl with sad brown eyes, convinces herself that everything is fine, that there is no reason to be nervous. However, the looks of the guests make her do it. It can be seen that the rich aristocrats with neatly trimmed beards are not very happy about today's holiday. Their brides or wives are also not happy about the wedding. For them, it's just entertainment, a spectacle to laugh at. Young ladies will discuss this day for a long time. Other guests, not as respectable as the previous ones, sit at the tables and literally devour the bride with lustful looks. These drunkards would happily spend the night with a dark-haired woman. However, their dream is unlikely to ever come true. The girl is almost a married lady. She and her fiancé approach the priest. The boy and the girl do not look at each other. Not because they are ashamed of their feelings, no. They just don't love each other. But for the rich, love, unfortunately, does not matter. The priest, a middle-aged man, begins to recite a prayer. The young people pretend to listen to him attentively, but each of them is lost in his own thoughts. Thoughts, it must be said, are not fun at all, not appropriate for such a bright day. We bless a beautiful husband and wife, says the priest in a calm but firm voice. The dark-haired woman lowers her head and mentally says that she cannot see a happy life. Not now that the girl has become the wife of a boy who hates her, and will soon cut her throat. The priest ends his speech with words about creating a strong family. Let's move to the past life of our bride. She, a black-haired student in a classic white shirt and black skirt, climbs the stairs to her apartment. A tall guy blocks her way. He demands money from the student. She guesses that the young man will spend them on gambling. He starts to get angry. Grandpa, take it away, you're sneaking around too much. The girl is indignant. She was fed up with this bastard. He presses the student against the wall, but the black-haired man is not afraid. Do you even know how much money I have already borrowed? Can you return everything? The guy calls the girl a stupid bitch and pushes her down. She does not even have time to grab something with her hand or even a bag. The girl takes one last look at the young man and after a moment hits the cold floor. Now let's return to the current life of the bride. More precisely, to the events that took place recently. A dark-haired woman, sitting in one of the rooms of the Count's estate, touches her lips. She looks up at the mirror and sees a beautiful girl with aristocratic features and light brown eyes. The dark-haired one can't understand why she looks like that. The girl does not yet know that she was reborn after that tragedy with the stairs. Is there a transmigration of the soul? She says quietly. The door of the room opens. A maid with short black hair and cold dark green eyes looks into the room. She turns to the dark-haired woman. Lady Edith! The girl turns her head. Haven't you forgotten what day it is? asks the maid. The brunette looks confused. She was surprised by the address of Lady Edith. The girl met this name in the novel Abandon Obsession, which she read in a past life. The main character of this work is the lovely blonde Lise Sinclair, the Count's illegitimate daughter. Due to her socially shameful origin, she was constantly insulted by the Count's family and lived an unhappy childhood. When the girl grew up, she was taken by a couple. Lise moved to the duchy with her new family. There, the girl met rich and incredibly handsome aristocrats who competed for her heart. Edith Regelhoff, in whose body a dark-haired woman ended up, also has her place in this novel. Only she is not an angel like Lise. Far from an angel. Edith is a stupid and greedy criminal blinded by love. Also, dark-haired is an incredibly jealous lady. She constantly screamed, arranged dramatic scenes for her family, and tried to do everything to ruin Lise's life. Now Edith whose body is already a completely different soul, sits on a chair and patiently waits for the maid to finish combing her luxurious hair. The girl thinks about the situation in which she is. Edith grew up in abundance and never worried about money. Why, if her father is the Count himself? After a few seconds, the maid informs the girl that everything is ready and moves away from the mirror. Edith looks incredible. Her hair is in a beautiful hairstyle, a dark dress decorated with lace. The maid tells the girl that the master is already waiting for her. She smiles widely. Dark-haired thanks for the message and runs out of the room. The maid is surprised. Thank you? 
She had never heard that word from Edith, the Count's proud daughter, around whom the world revolved. The girl holding a long, lush dress runs down the corridor. A joyful smile plays on her face. Dark-haired thinks she only needs to fix Edith's mistakes. She remembers the plot of the novel well. If I behave well, the dark-haired girl's eyes twinkle. I can get the love of my family for free. The girl reaches the Count's room and opens the massive door wide. Father, good morning, the dark-haired man says amiably without stopping to smile. But after a moment, all the joy of Edith evaporates. The dark-haired girl's father is standing at the table with a glass of wine in his hand. The man rudely says to his daughter, Isn't it too late for the morning? Edith is silent, not knowing how to answer this. The Count sighs unhappily and puts a glass of wine on the desktop. You are so slow. It seems that the husband is not happy about the arrival of his daughter. He asks the girl why she came here so late in the first place. Close the door from that side. The Count directly expels Edith. The girl lowers her eyes. Suddenly, a strange voice appears in her head. He tells the brunette that her identity verification is complete. Now the process of synchronizing information from memory is taking place. Edith feels that her consciousness is flying to pieces, and the body, the body is falling into some kind of abyss. It will stay there for a while so as not to interfere with the synchronization. One episode from her life appears in the girl's imagination, one of the rooms of the Count's estate. Edith is sitting on the floor in front of her father and some fair-haired young man. The girl promises the Count that she will not make any more mistakes. This painting is watched by a black-haired girl who is in Edith's body. Now she has a unique opportunity to learn the details of the life of the main criminal of the novel. The student is shocked by what she saw. She could not even imagine that Edith, a proud and cruel girl, is so afraid of her father and begs his forgiveness on her knees. Then another picture of Edith's life appears in the girl's mind. The Count takes a swing at the dark-haired man. From Edith's body, covered with bruises and scratches, you can understand that her father is beating her. After a few minutes, the man leaves, leaving Edith in the cold basement. The girl knocks on the door. Let me out of here, please. The student understands that Edith is not at all what she seems. Her audacity is only an external image. The picture changes again. Edith is standing by the mirror in a beautiful dress. The fair-haired young man tells the girl that everything has to be paid for. To everyone else, the young lady Regelhoff is just a living, attractive, and untouchable billboard of the Count's family, adorned in luxurious dresses. And at home, Edith turns into a punching bag, on which everyone can take out their anger. Even the servants. They won't get anything for it. The Count will not be too upset if he loses his daughter. She is just an expensive doll for him. All the wounds on her body can be disguised with cosmetics. Edith is sitting on the floor. A student approaches the girl. The dark-haired one asks her, Well, how? Do you think you can handle it? There is no disgust or hidden hostility in the girl's voice, just tired of it all. The student does not know what to say. She is scared to death. Edith's problems turned out to be not as simple as the black-haired woman imagined them to be. Fixing the life of the Count's daughter will not be easy. Synchronization is complete. The dark-haired one snaps back to reality. The Count shouts at the girl. He is annoyed by the slowness and thoughtfulness of Edith, which appeared out of nowhere. Not at all common sense. The man hits the table with his hands. Edith falls into a chair and opens her eyes wide. There are so many questions in her head and so few answers. The Count narrows his eyes and grits his teeth. You can't go wrong today. Ludwig's people cannot be allowed to notice even the slightest imperfection. The girl moves back. The Count deeply dislikes her. The husband asks his daughter if she remembers the content of the contract well. The girl must say that she will take three maids with her. Then the Regalkov family will be able to move on to the next step. The dark-haired one bows his head and humbly answers, Yes, father. The girl is sad because she has such a family. Several hours pass. Edith stands on the street and waits for the men accompanying her to settle their affairs. The dark-haired one thinks she needs to review her gender information. Duke Ludwig and Count Regelhoff have been rivals since childhood. The power of the two families was about the same. But the Ludwig family contributed to the war, for which they received the title of Duke. Of course, Count Regelhoff was unhappy with this turn of events. He believed that the Ludwig family defiantly stole the title of Duke from him. That is why the husband married Edith. With the help of his daughter, the man wanted to find information that could destroy the duchy. The dark-haired woman puts her hand to her chest. The girl feels that she will cry now. No need, she reassures herself. Everything is fine. You just have to turn this punishment into an opportunity. Edith clenches her hand into a fist. The girl does not know whether to say that she is lucky, 
but she knows how to find a way out of unpleasant situations and is very proud of it. The dark-haired girl's eyes sparkle. In novels where the heroine turns into a criminal, there is always a crisis at the beginning. Today the girl just needs to behave differently from the original Edith. The Count's carriage stops. First the men leave the crew, then Edith. The Count holds his daughter's hand as befits a gentleman. The girl looks quite sad. She looks up and sees a huge palace in light colors with many stairs. Several fountains with clean spring water are located on the territory of this estate. The Count, together with his children, is heading to the entrance to the palace. Edith is surprised by the grandeur and scale of Ludwig's estate. The girl's brother tells his father that the Duke's residence is as opulent as ever. The man says that splendor has no weight when it is empty inside. The conversation between father and son is interrupted by the butler, who was ordered by the Duke to meet the guests. The Ludwig family servant, a gray-haired man with a neatly trimmed beard, bows to the Count and says that the Duke and Duchess are already waiting for the Regalhof family inside. The butler opens the door for the guests. I'm taking you to them. The Count smiles and calls Edith. Daughter, let's go faster. It's not good to make people wait too long. The girl mentally notes that her father behaves very politely and gallantly in public. The dark-haired woman decides to play along with her husband. She gives the Count her hand and smiles. Yes, father, says Edith. The girl can barely keep up with the rapid pace of the Count and her brother. Of course, the dark-haired one does not like this blasphemy, but there is nothing you can do now. The Regalkov family enters the dining room. The butler recommends them to the owners of the estate. Five people are sitting at the table, the Duke, the Duchess, and their children. Edith smiles and twinkles her eyes. The main reason for her joy is to see the characters live, whose appearance she could only imagine based on the descriptions in the book. The Duchess thanks the guests for coming to the Duchy of Ludwig. Are you hungry? asks the woman politely. The table will be ready soon. The Duke, a tall, stocky man, is silent. The girl looks at Cliff, one of the heirs of the Ludwig family, the main male character of the novel. He is a handsome, black-haired young man with yellow eyes. Sitting next to Cliff is Lizzie, a cute blonde with big blue eyes and pale skin. The brunette mentally notes that Lizzie looks like a spring goddess. To the right of the blonde sits a young man who looks like Cliff. The only thing that distinguishes him from his brother is his eyes. Cold, dark blue eyes. This gloomy guy is Edith's future husband. The dark-haired woman's heart begins to beat at an incredible speed. The blushing girl puts her hand to her chest. Oh, I fell in love with him. Now I think I understand why Edith was so jealous of him. A straight and sharp nose and chin line create a haughty image. The boy also has an incredible body. Broad shoulders, a thin waist, moderately narrow hips. Edith does not know how a person can be so beautiful. The young man looks at his bride. After a second he looks away, showing Edith that he is not interested in her. The girl is trying to pull herself together. To do this, she lightly and as imperceptibly as possible slaps herself on the cheek with her hand. He still won't look at me. The brunette decides to focus on dinner. The table is covered with various snacks, fried salmon, cured meats, light healthy salads, lobster. Everything is here. The girl sits on a chair and picks up cutlery. There is already food on her plate, a piece of grilled meat, several pieces of potatoes and stewed mushrooms. Edith cuts off a piece of meat and puts it in her mouth. It is so delicious that the girl closes her eyes with pleasure. The steak is just perfect. It is very tender, and the frying is perfect. The father of the dark-haired girl says to the Duke, A father's heart will not calm down in any way. How can I send my daughter away like this? The girl sighs. It's begun. She understands what her father is talking about, but she doesn't show it. The Count puts his hand on the dark-haired woman's shoulder and tells the Duke that he would be calm if Edith took several maids with her. He says that with the maids who took care of Edith all her life, the girl will be more comfortable. The Duchess doesn't really like the Count's proposal, but she understands that it is necessary to say it as tactfully as possible. The woman smiles, but I think our maids are second to none. The Count cuts the steak. The man brings a piece of meat to his mouth, smiling bitingly, asks the Duchess if she brought maids with her when she got married. Fiancé Edith directs a displeased look at the Count. It seems to the boy that the father of the dark-haired girl allows himself too much, especially being in someone else's house. But the young man is silent. He understands that his words can worsen the already strained relationship between the two influential families. There is silence in the room. Edith rolls her eyes. The girl is uncomfortable for her father. The Duke stares at his opponent. It seems that the man understood that the Count was asking for permission to send several maids with Edith for a reason. However, it will not work to politely refuse the father of the dark-haired woman, so Edith is going to intervene in the conversation. 
Don't worry, Duke, the girl says in her mind and wipes her mouth with a napkin. After that, Edith smiles at the Count and without looking at him says, I'm fine, Father. Please forget this request, Duke. I'm getting married very young. That's why my father is worried. Lunch passed without incident. Edith's family returns home. The Count shouts at his daughter. He did not like her behavior, or rather the fact that she violated their agreement about the maids. The girl sighs tiredly and asks her father, Haven't you seen the Duke? Dark-haired tries to justify and justify his act. The man is silent. Edith turns on her acting skills. She clenches her hand into a fist and says in a dramatic tone, You asked that too obviously, but you know how tense I am? The dark-haired woman asks what good the maids are if she has already aroused the Ludwig family's suspicions. The Count narrows his eyes and says displeasedly, But what can you do if you are alone? The girl tells her father to think about it while she is in the duchy. If nothing happens, the members of the Ludwig family will relax their vigilance. All suspicions must be dispelled. The girl puts her hand to her chest. After I gain their trust, I will pretend that I miss my native home. The girl also suggests the possibility of implementing the option with a maid, but a little later. The Count puts his hand to his chin. He finds his daughter's thoughts quite good. Now we know what a difficult life Edith had. Let's go back to her wedding. The girl listens to the words of the priest. She is glad that now she will not have to live with her father. Hershen, bless their wedding rings and the eternal covenant hidden in them. The priest finishes the prayer. The boy and the girl turn to face each other. Now the newlyweds will exchange wedding rings. Little boys and girls dressed in festive costumes carry the decorations. Babies worry because they are afraid of doing something wrong. Edith smiles at the children. They seem very cute to her. The dark-haired man feels a piercing, icy gaze on him. She looks up at her fiancé. The boy's expression is full of disgust. Pressed lips, raised eyebrows. Everything betrays the young man's contempt for Edith. The girl sighs. She knows Killian doesn't love her. But now they just need to hurry so that this holiday of blasphemy is over as soon as possible. A boy and a girl hand the young a red pillow on which wedding rings lie. Edith closes her eyes and holds out her white, thinly gloved hand to Killian. The young man takes a silver ring with a diamond with thin fingers and quickly puts it on the dark-haired woman's finger. The girl looks at the decoration and smiles. Edith was amused by the way Killian put the wedding ring on her finger. He did it very carefully so as not to touch the girl's hand. Edith understands that her husband does not like it, but it is already too much, somehow childish. Now it's the girl's turn to put the wedding ring on Killian's finger. But Edith does not have time to take the decoration. The young man does it before her. Edith gives Killian a surprised look. She doesn't understand what he's up to. The guy puts on his wedding ring himself. Those present in the hall start to laugh. Edith lowers her eyes. Killian's action offended her. He must have done it on purpose to humiliate me, says the girl in her mind. The dark-haired girl clenches her hand into a fist and takes a deep breath, trying to calm herself down. The girl convinces herself that nothing terrible has happened. Anyway, she's not interested in Killian. Edith lightly runs her hand through the girl's hair and smiles. Thank you. The boy looks at the dark-haired man with undisguised disgust. Children leave the hall. The girl turns her head to the side, showing Killian that she is also not happy about this event, but unlike him, behaves with dignity. The old man looks at Edith. Interest seems to have appeared in his eyes, but in any case it quickly disappears. Killian looks forward. The priest takes out a huge old book with a brown cover and begins to read a new prayer. Edith thinks that a period in her life has finally come when she can enjoy peace. Evening. The ceremony is over. Edith stretches on her luxurious bed. Yesterday's wedding tired her out. Now the girl finally feels alive. On the holiday, she was worried about many things. For example, because of a very deep neckline in a dress. High heels also caused inconvenience. Edith needs her hands. After a few minutes, the girl sits down on a chair near the dressing table and starts combing her luxurious curls. Someone knocks on the door. Come in, says Edith. Listen, Lady Edith. This thin voice seems very familiar to the dark-haired man. The girl shuddered and turned to face her guest. This is Lise. The dark-haired one smiles at the blonde. Ah, uh, Lady Lise, what happened? The blonde looks quite excited. She uncertainly tells Edith that she would like to tell something. The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide. She recalls that a similar episode was in the original novel. And if Edith remembers correctly, it happened shortly after the wedding. In that episode, Lise was visited by Edith. The blonde wants to apologize for Killian's rudeness during the ceremony. However, her apology, on the contrary, angered the offended Edith even more. 
The dark-haired woman could not blame her husband, so all her anger poured out on Lisa. The girl scolded the blonde for coming to someone else's wedding in a white dress. Edith smiles when she recalls the incident. I can honestly understand why she was so upset. But the new Edith has no reason to be angry with Liza. The blonde approaches Edith and quietly says, I would like to apologize for Killian's rudeness. I hope you didn't take too much offense at him. Lise puts her hand to her chest and says that Killian is actually a warm-hearted person. What he produced during the ceremony was just a show for attention. The dark-haired one smiles. The blonde's words move her. Edith just can't hate this sweet girl who seems incapable of harming anyone. Bright shiny blonde hair, big blue eyes, a symbol of innocence. Acute appearance is combined with a righteous heart. This is how the main character of the novel should be. Edith squints sweetly and tells Lisa not to worry. I understand. The dark-haired man tilts his head to the side. She wants to treat Lise kindly. Edith says that it was as difficult for Killian as it was for her, because this marriage was an arrangement between their families. I will not be offended, says the girl. Lisa is surprised. Bilyavka expected a completely different reaction. Lise thought that the dark-haired woman would become jealous of her for Killian. The blonde opens her eyes wide. Lady Edith. Edith hopes she's doing the right thing. Lisa smiles and claps her hands. Bilyavka says that Edith is a very kind and mature girl, and these qualities are admirable. A blushing Edith puts her hand to her forehead. It is very nice to receive a sincere compliment from such a sensitive and sweet girl as Lise. Edith decides to return a compliment to a compliment, but I'm not even compared to you. This dress suits you so well. Lise is embarrassed. A maid enters the room. Ma'am, I brought you a towel. Lise shivers. She begins apologizing to Edith for preventing her from taking a bath. The blonde is about to say that she will call Killian now, but stops herself. You must be very tired, says the blonde. The dark-haired woman waves her hand and smiles. The girls say goodbye. As soon as Lise leaves the room, Edith takes off her thin velvet shirt. Is that the end of the wedding episode? The dark-haired woman asks herself with hope. The girl is going to have a good rest. She goes to the bathroom with bare feet. The dark-haired one climbs in and sighs with relief. What a hot water. I finally feel alive. Edith smiles widely. Although she became the Duke's wife only a few hours ago, she already feels the privileges of her title. For example, now she doesn't have to work hard. No, of course, Edith will have to do something. But no one will make her sit in the office until she loses her pulse. The dark-haired woman leans back on the bathtub. I will attend operas and balls. The girl imagines how she will spend time with the ducal family, but her thoughts are interrupted by someone's cold voice. Take a bath before the husband comes. Edith shuddered. Killian is standing in front of the girl. The guy, as usual, looks displeased. He casually waves his hand and calls Edith, shameless wife. The dark-haired one tries to cover himself. She is shocked by the sudden appearance of her husband. Lise seemed to say that she would not call him. Did he come himself? There was no such episode in the original story. The young man asks the girl why she is so surprised. Was someone else supposed to come here? He tries to touch Edith. The girl understands this. She decides not to succumb to provocation. The dark-haired girl smiles and tells Killian that she just didn't expect him to come. The old man says with a sneer in his voice, Thank God you're smart enough. Edith asks how else. After all, Killian didn't even let the dark-haired woman put a wedding ring on him. The old man leans over to Edith. Did you expect strange courtships from me? He thinks that the dark-haired girl is a naive fool who hopes for unearthly love. Killian's behavior annoys the girl, as well as his eternally dissatisfied face. Edith does not understand how it is possible to be such a handsome man and at the same time such a moron. But the dark-haired woman has no reason to hate Killian. He, like her, married against his own will. Besides, Edith is so tired that she doesn't even have the strength to get angry. She says in a calm tone, I'm just telling the truth. You obviously won't be in this room today after treating me like that. Killian's eyes widen. He did not expect Edith to be so calm. The guy suddenly turns around and walks away. The dark-haired man arches a thin eyebrow. Why did you come at all? The guy almost runs down the empty corridor. He feels humiliated. Edith, without using rude words, let the young man understand that he had behaved unworthily. And this annoyed the young man. Suddenly someone calls out to him. Killian? Parabok stops and turns his head to the side. He sees Lise. The blonde asks Killian if he was in his wife's room. The young man sighs and says he was, but Edith had no expectations for tonight. In principle, just like him. Lise asks what that means. Killian says with undisguised disgust in his voice, she climbed into the bath and took a nap. Lisa puts her hand to her chest. 
The girl is surprised by the young man's words. She tries to say that Edith was waiting for her husband, but Killian stops the blonde. He gently runs his hand through her fair hair. You think too well of everyone? Parubak is openly hostile to Edith and the Regalhoff family in general. Killian thinks the dark-haired one will make fun of him. Lisa lowers her head. She says something about Edith's words. Killian guesses that Lise was visiting his young wife. He excitedly asks the blonde what the dark-haired girl asked her. The girl looks away from the young man. Lady Edith complimented my dress, and I immediately blushed. It can be seen that Lise is upset about something. Killian can't believe that Edith complimented the blonde's dress. He thinks that the dark-haired woman offended Lisa's appearance. But the blonde immediately denies it. She says that maybe something upset Edith. Killian smirks. Upset, huh? Think about the dress she was wearing. The guy says that the dark-haired woman's wedding dress was too revealing, even lewd. Isn't that why Edith reacted the way she did to your dress? Killian asks Lise. He snorts, recalling Edith's appearance, especially her scornful look and plunging cleavage. The young man calls his wife obscene. Liza is outraged by Killian's words. She does not understand how you can insult your own wife with such rude words. How did you even manage to say that? The girl shouts. It's offensive to the guy. He does not like that Lisa is protecting a person he hates. The old man asks the blonde if she wants to tell him something else. Upset by Killian's harshness, the girl tries to correct the situation. Killian, that's not what I meant. But the young man barely lets her finish. The guy asks Lisa if she knows about his feelings. Someone's voice intervenes in the conversation of the half-brother and sister. Lisa. Killian shuts up immediately. He is not going to explain his feelings for Lisa in front of other people. And especially with his brother, who happened to meet them. Cliff smiles charmingly and asks the blonde and Killian what they are doing here. Lise smiles back at her stepbrother. She is very happy to see him. But Killian looks unhappy with the appearance of his brother. He is jealous of the blonde towards Cliff. The eldest of the brothers begins to discuss something with Lise. Killian sighs and hangs his head. He was so hoping to have a good time with the blonde, and Cliff, as always, ruined everything. The morning of the next day, Edith wakes up in her room. The dark-haired one sits on the bed and stretches, yawning loudly. She glances at the clock and her eyes widen in surprise. Even after yesterday's grueling ceremony, Edith woke up on time. It must be the strength of a young, no healthy girl, says the dark-haired man. She joyfully clenches her hands into fists. Edith had never felt so good in her life. She puts her hand to her chin and contemplates her new title as the Duke's daughter-in-law. If it works out, the dark-haired man will be able to enjoy life in peace. Killian is a minor character in love with Lisa, but his parents may be different. After a few minutes of thinking, the dark-haired man gets up from the bed and goes to the window. The girl hopes that Duke and Duchess Ludwig, who so warmly welcomed Lise, will open their hearts to her, Killian's wife. During their first meeting, the atmosphere was not very good, and all because of Edith's father. The girl is going to fix the situation. The dark-haired one smiles widely and twinkles his eyes. I'll say hello to them first. But Edith is in no hurry to do it right now. First, you need to get yourself in order and think everything over. The girl assumes that she must win the trust of the heroes of the novel. If the dark-haired man wants to survive in the Ludwig family, the opinion of the Duke and Duchess is more important than Killian's. After all, they still make the main decisions in the duchy. Edith understands that her husband is unlikely to love her, so she decides not to even try to conquer. All the girl wants now is to enjoy a quiet life. For this, she needs to win the trust of the Ludwig couple. Edith thinks that no mother-in-law would hate a daughter-in-law who came to say hello the day after the wedding. Edith notices a bell with a rope on the wall. The girl is smiling. In a past life, she had read about such a thing in books. You can call a maid with the help of a bell. This is exactly what Edith needs now. A maid can turn a girl into a decent daughter-in-law in a matter of minutes. Edith calls the maid. A slender, black-haired girl comes. The dark-haired girl asks the maid to prepare her breakfast. The girl bows to Edith. She crosses her arms over her chest and asks the maid's name. Anna, ma'am, she answers. Edith, who is just examining her clothes brought from the Regalhof estate, says, Tell me, Anna, are all the dresses that I brought with me from my parents' house really so vulgar? The maid gives the dark-haired man an affirmative answer. Edith is thinking. The situation is so-so. If a girl shows up for breakfast in a dress with a plunging neckline, she is unlikely to be welcomed. Edith imagines the expressions on the Duke and Duchess's faces and sighs. God, what a shame. The dark-haired woman thinks about what she should do so as not to be embarrassed on the very first day of her stay at the estate. The girl turns her head towards Anna. 
The dark-haired woman asks the maid to go to the workshop and ask her to sew her dresses. Anna bows her head to her mistress. The girl leaves Edith's room. The dark-haired woman is surprised. I didn't give the order, but she went to carry it out without objection. That's how I knew that the maids at my father's estate were strange. Edith picks up one of her dresses with thin straps and, of course, a plunging neckline. The girl notes that this thing will also need to be sewn, but a little later. Now the main thing is not to be late for breakfast. Edith opens her eyes wide. She remembered something else incredibly important. The night after the wedding was supposed to be the first night of marriage, but there was nothing between Edith and Killian. The girl wonders if she should make some bloodstains on the bed. But after a second, the dark-haired man rejects this idea. Killian will definitely not be happy if his wife deals with this issue on her own. And all because, as in the original story, the Duke's youngest son is ready to give his all to Lisa. He wants to save his virginity just for the blonde. The dark-haired one guesses this. She smiles dreamily. Chaste handsome man, how wonderful. Don't impose too much sympathy on a secondary character. The girl freezes in place when she remembers Killian. She still does not understand why this cold guy came to her last night. Why was he standing over her bath? Just to fight? Whatever it was, Edith enjoyed looking at Killian's perfect face. The dark-haired one blushes. Heart is beating so fast. Anna, who has just finished combing Edith's hair, calls her, Ma'am. The girl shuddered in surprise. She was too lost in her thoughts. Anna says that everything is ready. The dark-haired one thanks the girl. Edith is angry with herself for having romantic thoughts about Killian. Yes, this young man is very handsome, but he is not interested in a girl. At least she thinks so. A few minutes later, Edith enters the hall where the Ludwig couple is having breakfast. A girl wearing a dark dress with no cleavage greets the Duke and Duchess. She wonders if they slept well. Simple etiquette formulas of politeness work. The Duke and Duchess smile kindly at their daughter-in-law. The Duchess says she slept well that night and invites Edith to the table. The woman puts her hand to her chest and says, I was worried, aren't you worried? Edith sits on the edge of the sofa and says that everything is fine. Dark-haired sees a cup of tea on the table. The girl is smiling. She likes that the Ludwig couple took care of her. Edith is less worried. She is sure that the Ludwigs were informed that there was no wedding night today. The girl raises a cup of tea to her lips. The Duke decides to talk to his daughter-in-law. The Count raised you as a favorite daughter. I wonder if you know anything at all about the affairs of the housekeeper of the House of Aristocrats. The girl smiles and says that she knows how to allocate a budget, manage some affairs and work with documents. Perhaps, continues Edith, things are a little different in the duchy but if you teach me, I'll learn quickly. The Duke is somehow strangely smiling. He takes a sip of his tea and says to Edith, it seems that the Count has only taught you properly. The girl freezes in place. She understands what the Duke is implying. He thinks that Edith will try to steal the documents of the Ludwig family at the first opportunity. The girl carefully puts the cup on the saucer. The dark-haired one looks up at the Duke and says confidently, if I don't deserve your trust, teach me something else. I will try. The man clears his throat. The Duchess nudges him under the elbow. The woman does not like that the Duke is so rude to Edith. The Duchess hurries to correct the situation. Thank God that the Count taught you well. You can help me in two weeks. If you need something, say. Edith smiles and thanks the Duchess. The dark-haired man asks the woman, Would you be able to set me up with someone who will introduce me to the estate? The woman is somewhat surprised by such a request. She thought Kiliana would give Edith a little tour. But after a few seconds, the Duchess agrees to find a guide. Dark-haired says that it is time for her to go. She says goodbye to the Ludwig couple and leaves the hall, carefully closing the door behind her. Edith exhales loudly as soon as he leaves the room. The girl was very nervous during communication with the Duke and Duchess. Someone approaches the dark-haired woman and asks if she is okay. The girl smiles. Ah, yes, I'm sorry, I was just nervous. A tall, green-eyed man in glasses is standing in front of Edith. His long blonde hair is pulled back into a somewhat unkempt ponytail. The girl guesses that it is Baron Renan Filch. The dark-haired one bows to the man and smiles. Nice to meet you. Well, take care of me. Renan is to become Edith's tour guide. Renan now works as the Duke's assistant. Once upon a time, the man was an ordinary servant engaged in document circulation. The girl is a little nervous, because Renan was not mentioned in the original novel. The man asks the dark-haired woman if she wants to tour the estate just now. Renan looks very serious. Sometimes it seems to a girl that this is not just a world inside a book, but reality. That's all for real here. Rusiavi says that he has a lot of work today, so he won't be able to devote much time to Edith. The girl smiles. Let's start now. Renan walks forward. The girl catches up with him. She wonders if all the characters absent from the original story share this kind of openness. 
A man and a girl enter a dark room. It stands for jewelry. Renan says it's a jewelry room. The Duchy's family jewels are kept here. Then the fair-haired man takes Edith to the next room, with weapons and knight's armor. These things are usually used by the Duke's sons and himself. After a few minutes, Renan and the dark-haired man enter a huge room with bookshelves, Ludwig's family library. Rusiavi says that many rare books are stored here. Amazed, Edith looks around the library. She likes this place. The girl is already imagining how she will spend her time here. However, it is better to ask Renan if you can enter here without permission. Without turning around, the man replies, Every member of the Duke's family can visit the library whenever they want. The man adds that this rule also applies to the Sextine Hall, where new works of art are presented every month. Edith's eyes twinkle. Wonderful. In her past life, due to lack of money, the girl could not attend various cultural events. But now everything has changed. Renan opens the door of the Sextine Hall. Edith's eyes widen in surprise. The room itself is spacious and bright. The walls, windows and ceiling are decorated with gold. And what are the sculptures located here worth? A real treat for the eyes. Renan says the estate is too big to go through in one go. The girl thanks her husband for the excursion. The dark-haired one can't believe that he lives in such a beautiful estate. She smiles at Renan. You have such a nice voice. I didn't even notice how time flew by. Renan freezes in place. A faint blush appears on his cheeks. It seems that the man is not used to compliments. He says he was just doing his job. The girl agrees. A man and a girl go out on the balcony. Renan says that there is a large terrace below. A large terrace? asks the dark-haired man. Renan points to a gazebo with a blue roof and says that it is often used when guests come to the estate. The Duke also likes to sit in the gazebo. Edith sees that Lise, Killian, and Cliff are sitting at a small table. They have a nice conversation about something. Killian keeps his eyes on Lise. Dark-haired is not very happy to watch this. Renan notices a change in the girl's mood. The man is wary. He does not really understand what is wrong. The girl begins to look at the nature around, trying to distract herself from thoughts about Killian, who is currently spending time with Lise. Edith exhales loudly. Renan directs his gaze to the terrace and notices there the reason for Edith's sudden sadness. Mr. Killian, says the blonde in surprise. The dark-haired one just smiles. Renan asks himself why the young master is here. Edith does not immediately guess that Renan is shocked by what he saw, because Killian should be with his wife and not drinking tea with another woman. The dark-haired one wonders, what did Edith do in the original story? She must have caused a scandal and blamed everything on Liza. Well, in any case, I have to behave with dignity. The girl glances at the gazebo again. Killian doesn't look at all like he did yesterday at the wedding. Next to Lise, he is kind of relaxed or something. Cliff notices Edith and his eyes twinkle. The girl hurries to look away from Killian and pretend that she does not care what her husband is doing. The dark-haired one straightens her hair and smiles at Renan. This is a really beautiful place. The garden will look even better in late spring. I'm sure of it. The blonde agrees with the girl. He looks confused by Edith's calm reaction to Killian's behavior. The girl says that she will come here often but leaves. Renan looks after the dark-haired woman. He is really surprised by her behavior. Yes, Edith Regelhoff is not what he thought. Liza's loud laughter can be heard from the terrace. A spacious room lined with cabinets with a lot of books. This is the Duke's office. A man sits at his desk and looks through family documents. Renan stands in front of the Duke. Redhead is here to tell the owner of this estate about Edith. Renan says that the girl listened to him attentively during the excursion. Also, she understood the structure of the estate surprisingly quickly, adds the blonde. The Duke, not distracted by the papers, asks Renan if he noticed anything strange. Rusyavi says that nothing like that happened. Edith smiled and behaved very politely. Despite the rumors, she showed herself very well. But after a few seconds, Renan remembers the scene on the terrace and decides to tell the Duke about it. When the husband hears that his married son has been drinking tea in Lisa's company, he stops writing. The Duke looks up at the blonde. What? The man sighs loudly. He also asked Killian not to give cause for claims or scandals. The Duke thinks that Edith was not joking when she saw Killian with another woman. The man recalls how he had to persuade his son to marry Edith. The Duke convinced Killian that this marriage was necessary to prevent the friendship between Count Regelhoff and Count Langston. The guy said that he would be Edith's husband only on paper. The Duke drops his quill on the document. A large ink stain appears on the paper. The man clenches his hands into fists. And knowing all this, he did so. Renan is careful to say that the lady didn't even pay attention to Killian's flirtation with Lisa. Herzog can't believe his ears. Didn't you pay attention? What? The blonde turns his head to the side. 
Of course I don't know what Lady Edith was thinking, but instead of making a fuss, she just walked away pretending nothing happened. The Duke puts his hand to his chin. He must admit that his daughter-in-law is quite an unusual girl. So far, she differs from the image of the hysterical Edith Regalhoff. Dark-haired room. The girl had just finished her lunch. Anna approaches her and asks permission to remove the dishes from the table. Edith thanks the maid. Anna begins to fuss. Dark hair does not feel very comfortable. In her past life, she tried to eat only at home, so she cannot sit quietly and watch someone clean. Dark hair decides to help the maid. The girl smiles at Anna and says that she made a good effort at dinner. She offers the maid to go eat. Anna stares at her mistress for a few seconds. The maid was not used to such a friendly attitude. No, the Duke's family did not insult her, but they did not help either. Anna realizes that the silence has been prolonged, so she hastens to thank the girl and leave the room. Edith thinks that her kindness may arouse suspicion, but you don't do anything. It is better to overdo it with good behavior than to accidentally offend someone. Edith leans on her arm and sighs. We need to decide how to treat Lise. The blonde should become the main heroine of this world. However, her life was not simple and cloudless until she got into the Ludwig family. Sinclair's son and daughter constantly abused Lise, the Count's illegitimate child. The native home became a prison for the blonde, where she was humiliated and even beaten. But Liza's kindness and sensitivity saved her. Due to the fact that the blonde helped Duchess Ludwig not to fall from the horse, the influential couple paid attention to her. The Duchess and Duke were outraged by the cruel treatment of the Count and his children towards little Lise. The Ludwigs bought the rights to the Lisa from Sinclair. The Count quickly renounced his parental rights and thereby lost the opportunity to procreate with the Duke. Sinclair regretted it very much. Edith picks up a cup of fragrant tea. The girl recalls that there was not a single positive hero with a tragic ending in the book. The past life of the dark-haired woman was full of troubles from beginning to end. The management of the company where the girl worked constantly took advantage of their position. And this is only one of the many disappointments that befell the girl. She broke up with her boyfriend when she saw him going to a motel with another woman. The day when the student learned about her lover's betrayal was the last in her life. As we already know, the broken black-haired woman was pushed down the stairs. The girl hit her head on the cold floor and died from blood loss. The student does not know what happened to Appa, her abuser. She doesn't know if her parents were sad without her. The girl sadly thinks that they cared more about Appa than their dead daughter. But it doesn't matter now. In this life, the dark-haired woman takes care of herself. Edith, who had just stepped out onto the balcony to get some fresh air, notices Lise in the Duke's garden. A blonde woman, dressed in a soft pink dress, sits under a tree and reads. Edith thinks it might be better to befriend Lise instead of avoiding her. The brunette is about to leave for her room as Killian notices. The guy approaches Lisa and leans his hand on a tree. He asks the blonde what she is reading. Lise smiles. This is the story of the Imperial family. Bilyavka says that she is reading this somewhat difficult book because she wants to become more educated. Working on my future, Lisa squints sweetly. Killian flashes his gray eyes and tells the blonde that she can call on him if she needs to. I'll be happy to help you figure it all out, says the boy. Edith enters the room and closes the balcony door. The girl does not want Lise and Killian to notice her. Now she watches the blonde and the boy through the window. It's safer that way. But after a few seconds, the dark-haired man catches himself thinking that eavesdropping is not a good idea. She closes the curtain until suddenly she hears Lise asking Killian where his wife is. Edith freezes in place. The blonde woman reproachfully says to the boy, Is she alone all day? But Killian tells Lise not to pay attention to the dark-haired one. The guy calls his young wife a hostage who will leave this estate very soon. Edith sighs deeply. So what does he think of me? The estate of the Sinclair family. One of the rooms. A porcelain teapot flies into the wall. It shatters into pieces. This rather cute thing was broken by the owner of the room. A pretty, at first glance, fair-haired girl wearing a green dress. The blonde is very angry. She clasps her head in her hands and shouts, Machnia, it's just some kind of delusion. The girl asks herself, why this girl? This blonde with blue eyes is Layla Sinclair, Earl Sinclair's youngest daughter. Someone enters the room and asks the girl what happened, but he looks at the uninvited guest. Don't pretend to be a fool. You know everything. Bilyavka says that Edith Regalhoff married Killian Ludwig. The visitor, a tall blonde boy, Damien Sinclair, smiles. He is amused by his sister's indignation. Layla clenches her hands into fists. Why Regalhoff? The young man waves his hand and says that perhaps the Ludwigs have such a hobby, collecting useless women. The girl growls at her brother. You're having fun, aren't you? The guy says that there is no point in getting angry. 
Layla's brother's calm makes her suspicious. The blonde looks into the young man's eyes. So you know something that I don't? The boy crosses his arms on his chest and smiles at his sister from the corner of his mouth. He calls the maid to clean up the mess in the room. Layla sits down on the couch and looks at her brother expectantly. Tell me. The guy sits down in a soft beige chair. The maid serves tea to the young gentleman. The young man raises a cup of hot drink to his lips and tells his sister that she is very temperamental. Layla drills him with blue eyes. The old man finally stops making fun of his sister. Well, let's rewind time. Why did these two play a wedding? Damien answers his own question. The boy says that Count Riegelhoff has the right to distribute the iron ore mined from the southern deposits. In other words, he has raw materials. From this raw material, the Count can make weapons. Layla picks up her cup of tea. Damien asks his sister why what he just said is so important. The blonde narrows her eyes. Where did you get the idea that the Count will make weapons? And in general, I don't know. Damien laughs and asks his sister if she knows how the powers are divided now. The young man says that the main political forces are Archduke Langston, who aspires to become emperor, and the imperial faction that supports the young ruler. It would be dangerous if the Archduke's followers started making weapons, wouldn't it? Asks the young man. Duke Ludwig had to win Riegelhoff over to his side. Despite her brother's hint, Leda still doesn't understand anything, which is why she gets angry. What's the good in this? You wanted to explain why marriage is necessary. Are you mocking me? Damien asks his sister to listen to him to the end. The old man smiles slyly and twinkles his eyes. Is Count Riegelhoff really sitting on Duke Ludwig's chain? The boy tells his sister about what he saw very recently when he was at the Riegelhoff estate. He was just walking down the corridor when he suddenly heard the Count's screams. Damien immediately stopped and went to the source of the voice. The young man, careful not to be noticed, looked into one of the rooms. There he saw the Count shouting at his daughter. The girl begged her father not to punish her. Edith promised the Count that she would not make any more mistakes. Riegelhoff told his daughter, If you don't do what you have to do, you'll be without dinner for a week. Damien was shocked by this picture. He could not believe for a long time that the image of the proud and unprincipled Edith Riegelhoff was a fake. Layla is also surprised by this fact. Impossible, says the girl. Damien leans back in his chair and says that Edith is really just a victim of her father. The guy is smiling. He is interested in how events will develop. If the Sinclair siblings can get all the information they need about Edith, the Riegelhoffs will be doomed. The Lord of the Ludwig family. A mischievous breeze enters the room through high, ceiling-to-ceiling -ceiling windows. Renan and Edith walk down the corridor. The man shows the girl another part of the building. Renan leads the dark-haired man to the balcony. This is another exit to the terrace. The girl is impressed by the beauty and grandeur of the estate. It took Edith a whole week to visit all the rooms in the house. What should I do now? She thinks. Renan gives the brunette a somewhat suspicious look and tells her not to worry about it. Edith does not really understand what the blonde is talking about. The Duchess has a request for you, the blonde says restrainedly. The girl immediately perks up. Really? Renan stares at the dark-haired man. He had never seen a person who was happy to be asked, but the man would not be so surprised if he knew how difficult it is for Edith to sit idle. The girl clarifies the location of the Duchess's office in Blonde. Third door on the left, if you go down the corridor, right? Renan silently agrees. The dark-haired woman smiles charmingly at the man and says that thanks to him, she finds her way around this estate perfectly. The girl thanks Renan and asks if she is a good student. The blonde opens his eyes. The behavior affects him somehow strangely. After a minute, the man finally pulls himself together. He adjusts his glasses. It would be strange if you forgot everything. Edith says goodbye to her husband and heads to the Duchess's office. There, the girl is met by a smiling lease. Come in quickly. The Duchess is distracted by the papers. Edith smiles at the blonde. Dark hair asks Lisa if they can work together. The girl takes the blonde by the hand. What happiness, if so? Please teach me everything. Lisa's embarrassed by such praise. The blonde blushed. I should be glad that the Duchess considers me capable of carrying out serious assignments. The Duchess notes that the girls get along well with each other. Edith turns her head towards the woman. Mother, I'm sorry I didn't greet you, but the Duchess is not offended by her daughter-in-law. The woman squints sweetly and says that these are small things. She asks Lisa to help her with the documents. Bilyavka agrees. Edith joins Lise. The girls sit for several hours at a long desk and painstakingly go through family papers. The Duchess gets up and starts pacing the room. But where are they? The woman says with a note of irritation in her voice. Edith asks the Duchess who she is waiting for. Instead of the woman, Lisa gives the answer to this question. The Duchess called the tailors. 
Edith's eyes widen in surprise. It is, of course, good for tailors, but there is one caveat. There was a similar episode in the original story. It ended with a quarrel between Edith and Lise. The dark-haired woman was dissatisfied with something and made a face at the innocent blonde. Well, this time the girl will try not to repeat the mistakes of the past. A maid enters the room. She tells the Duchess that the tailors have already arrived and are waiting in the drawing room. The woman suggests that the girls stop working and have some fun. They agree and fold the papers into small, neat piles. Edith tries to recall the details of the original episode, Living Room. The Duchess is sitting on a luxurious soft sofa. In her hands, the woman has a catalog with dresses for any color and taste. The Duchess catches herself thinking that she chooses monotonous designs all the time. Edith and Lise are sitting opposite the woman. Girls are also busy choosing dresses, at least Lise. Edith is frantically trying to remember the details of the episode, and she succeeds. After a few minutes, the Duchess puts her magazine aside and says to the girls, Would you please pick out something for me? Edith tenses up. It seems to the girl that the woman asked for this because she wants to check on her. But the dark-haired man does not understand why. The Duchess will still like Lisa's choice. Edith stares at the blonde. Ta asks her mother if they can really choose a dress for her on their own. The dark-haired man tries to calm himself down. Still, it won't change anything. Lise is the main character of this story, so it's obvious that her choice will be better than Edith's. Besides, the blonde has known the Duchess for five years. A cute girl with brown wavy hair, one of the seamstresses, approaches Edith. She gives the dark-haired woman another catalog of dresses. Edith is delighted with the beauty of the proposed outfit. Lise has already managed to look at all the options for dresses. The girl's blue eyes sparkle. How about this option? She hands the Duchess a catalog. On one of its pages is a dark blue lush velvet dress with a closed top. I think, says Lise, it will emphasize your beauty. The dressmaker says it's a great choice. The design of this dress was developed very recently. It is made of high-quality velvet. Dark-haired tries to look in the catalog. The girl is 100% sure that Lise has chosen one of the best options, as it should be expected. The Duchess has a light skin tone, so any color will suit her. However, dark blue will especially emphasize the amber eyes of an aristocrat. The Duchess snaps Edith out of her thoughts. The woman asks the dark-haired man if she liked anything. The lady wants to hear her daughter-in-law's opinion. Edith smiles. It will be difficult because the dress that Lady Lise chose is unsurpassed, but if you want something new, how about this? The girl hands the Duchess a catalog. The woman is shocked by Edith's choice. It is impossible to say for sure whether the Duchess liked the proposed dress or not. It's just that a woman is used to a certain monotony. The dark-haired one understands this. I think you can wear this dress on days when you want to change your mood a bit. Edith's choice is quite bold. A lush, gray-blue dress with lantern sleeves. The dressmaker says that this is a wonderful combination of colors that not everyone can appreciate. Edith stares at the Duchess, waiting for what she will say. The woman thinks, The dress is beautiful, but is the design too bold for me? Edith sighs. The girl knew that the Duchess would not appreciate her choice. The dark-haired woman tries to convince the woman to order her chosen option. You are very beautiful, so you will match this dress. The Duchess hesitates, but still agrees. She says she will order both dresses. It's time to pick up something for Lisa. The blonde looks somewhat surprised. Even in a few years of living in the duchy, she was used to good treatment. Lise waves her hands and says that there is no need to choose anything. She already has enough dresses. But the duchess does not listen to the blonde. The woman has already chosen a beautiful floral dress for Liza. Edith points to the pink design. This dress would suit Lady Lise, too. Such a pink color does not suit everyone. But the lady has pale skin and rosy cheeks, so she will look incredible in it. The Duchess picks up the catalog to look at the option that Edith suggested. This time, the woman likes the choice of dark-haired. Lise still tries to say she doesn't need anything, but the girl's words are again ignored. Edith and the Duchess choose a white dress with aquamarine decoration for Lise. The dressmaker writes down the wishes of aristocrats on paper. About half an hour later, the Duchess tells the dressmaker that they will stop at five dresses for Lise. Edith sighs. How difficult it was to choose, mother. The woman recalls that they did not choose a dress for the dark-haired woman. Edith smiles and says that she does not need new clothes. Instead, she asks the dressmaker if the atelier does dress alterations. The green-eyed girl smiles. Of course, but what do you mean by recycling? Edith says she has several dresses she would like to have remade. The girl asks Anna to bring them. The maid immediately obeys the dark-haired woman's order. Anna brings a black-and-white dress. 
Edith asks the dressmaker to remove all jewelry and cleavage from her clothes. Green-Eyed picks up one of the dresses. Ho-Ho, looks like you've changed your taste a lot. Dark-Haired squints cutely. You can say that. Edith then gives the dressmaker some more instructions on how to make dresses. The Duchess and Lise are watching the dark-haired woman in surprise. They did not think that Edith would not want new clothes. Finally, it all ends. The dressmaker leaves the estate. Edith says goodbye to Lise and the Duchess and goes to her room. The girl stretches. I'm tired. Choosing dresses is, of course, interesting, but monotonous and boring. Edith wonders how many diamond beads can be collected from all her dresses. Then the dark-haired man turns his thoughts to the Duchess. The girl decides to establish contact with this sweet but influential woman, calling her mother. Suddenly, Edith stops. She notices Killian at the door of her room. The boy stands with his arms crossed on his chest and looks at Edith. It seems he was waiting for her. The young man's gaze is cold and indifferent. Killian approaches the dark-haired girl and, without explaining anything, orders her to follow him. The girl is surprised. She tries to politely ask the young man what happened, but he doesn't even let her finish. He lowers his head and says with undisguised disappointment, Lise invited you to tea. It can be seen that the young man is not very happy with the blonde's decision. The dark-haired one smiles, Ah, of course. She tries to remember if there was a similar episode in the original story. Killian walks quickly down the hall. Edith is in no hurry to catch up with the young man. Why? He doesn't want to see her anyway. The dark-haired woman is sure that Killian sent Liza here. He would not have come to her in this way. A girl can see her husband. Still, he is incredibly handsome. Broad shoulders, good posture, strong legs. The dark-haired woman's heartbeat quickens at the sight of this standard male body. Suddenly, Killian stops and turns his head towards the girl. Edith immediately looks away from the boy. The girl hopes that Killian did not notice how she literally undressed him with her eyes. Fortunately, the young man could not even think about it. He returned to the girl for a completely different reason. The boy asks Edith to watch her tongue, especially in front of Lee's. The girl lowers her eyes. The guy says in a serious tone, Lies is like a family for us. She is more important to me than you, understand? Edith expected such a direct confession from the young man. However, his words still hurt her, and the dark-haired man talks about it. Killian snorts. Can anything hurt you? The girl reminds the boy that she is also human. Man? With a clear mockery in his voice, the young man clarifies, Not a snake? Edith raises her eyebrows and responds with insult after insult. Should I treat Lise in accordance with the manners of a young gentleman? It seems that Killian wants to spoil Edith's mood and show everyone how bad a woman she is. The girl approaches the boy closely. I'm not one of those people who is easily angered. Killian is again surprised by his wife's behavior. Edith looks into the young man's eyes. However, hurting me is a completely different matter. And you are great at it. With her head held high, Edith heads for the manor exit, leaving a confused Killian behind. In fact, he was really trying to make the girl angry all this time, so that he could then expose her as a criminal. A minute later, Edith goes out on the terrace. Cliff and Lise are already waiting for her in the gazebo. The blonde smiles at the dark-haired woman. Come here quickly. Edith thanks the girl for the invitation. The dark-haired one sits down next to Lise. Later, Killian arrives. The girls are discussing something among themselves and laughing. Killian's wife behaves very politely. Cliff decides to intervene in the conversation between the dark-haired and the blonde. The guy picks up his cup of tea and turns to Edith. He asks if she is taking on too much work. You just got married. The young man smiles. Shouldn't you and Killian go on a trip? Edith is not confused. I think he is very busy. Killian crosses his arms over his chest. His face shows no emotion. A minute later, the boy asks his older brother if now is the best time to explore the lands. Winter is already over. Cliff blinks and says that makes sense. The young man smiles at Lisa and asks if she wants to go with him. You dreamed of going on a trip somehow, Cliff reminds the blonde. Lisa's confused. She does not know what to say to the boy. The blonde is not against traveling, but going somewhere alone with Cliff doesn't seem like the best idea to her. There may be rumors about their relationship, which is not necessary at all. Also, the girl is afraid to offend Killian. The Duke's younger son is angry with his brother. Why are you putting Lisa in an awkward position? He tells the blonde to ignore Cliff's questions. Killian's brother has a different opinion about this situation. If I'm not there, it's because of you that Lise will be in an awkward position. Edith shares the boy's opinion. Now Killian, Cliff, and Lise look like good brothers and sisters who love and protect each other. But if the Duke's eldest son now goes to explore the lands alone, Lise and Killian will look like lovers. If we take into account that the Duke's youngest son is married, 
rumors cannot be avoided. Edith wonders about Cliff's behavior. The boy with the yellow eyes is not at all like Killian in character. Maybe his mindset is different because he's the main character. In any case, Edith needs to take a closer look at this young man and figure out how to deal with him. Cliff takes a sip of tea and looks at the dark-haired man. Lady Edith, what do you think? He asks. It's interesting to know. The dark-haired one flinches in surprise. I'm sorry, what are you talking about? The boy tilts his head to one side and smiles sheepishly. How do you feel about me being the only one to leave this estate? And to the situation between you, Killian, and Lady Lise? He folds his hands together, waiting for a response from the dark-haired woman. From the expression on the young man's face, you can understand that the question he asked is not curiosity, but a provocation. The provocation is defiant and undisguised. Cliff's behavior impresses Lisa, and even the unmoved Killian. The Duke's younger son frowns at his wife. He is interested to hear what she has to say. The dark-haired man is unable to move. She tries to digest Cliff's question. The girl raises her eyebrows when she realizes that it is too daring. To make fun of a person who has become a hostage of circumstances is too much. The girl is about to wipe the idiotic smile off Cliff's face. The dark-haired woman closes her eyes and puts her hand to her chin. Edith tries to control her anger. She, unlike the members of the Ludwig family, has a sense of tact. The girl picks up the cup and says, I don't care at all. Showing indifference in such a situation is the best option. Cliff is shocked. What? His younger brother crosses his arms over his chest and smiles faintly. He seems to be satisfied with his wife's answer. Edith tilts her head to the side and explains to Cliff that surveying the lands is the duty of the heir to the dukedom, meaning Cliff. I have no right to tell you to go or not, says the girl indifferently. Cliff tries to say that's not what he meant, but Edith does not listen to the young man. As for Lady Lise, I think that a trip with you will be quite a test for her. The dark-haired one smiles. She tells Cliff that not every person can withstand a long journey. Besides, Lady Lise is not the wife of the Duke's eldest son. Edith hints that Cliff's request to the blonde is not entirely polite. The girl hears someone's laughter and opens her eyes wide in surprise. The sound was made by Lady Lise. The blonde put her hand to her mouth, trying to hide a slight smile. Edith's words about his wife amused Liza. The blonde has feelings for Cliff, but tries to pretend to be an innocent girl who has never heard of love. However, Lisa's eyes now betray her thoughts. Edith does not take her eyes off the blonde. Dark-haired understands that everything in this novel is not as clear as it seemed at first glance. Lisa's is not so simple. The blonde feels that Edith is looking at her. She quickly wipes the smile off her face. After a second, Lisa opens her eyes wide and asks Cliff if he must go for an examination right now. Edith is shocked by how skillfully Lise manages her emotions. The girl has natural charm and at the same time restraint. She is not naive at all, and this can bring Edith a lot of problems in the future. But now the dark-haired man is not going to deal with it. She takes a sip of tea. Cliff flashes his yellow eyes and tells the blonde that he is not going anywhere yet. Our daughter-in-law has such a big heart, adds a couple after a few seconds. There is a hint of mockery in his voice. Cliff glares at Edith. It is this young man, not Lise, who will be the main problem of the dark-haired woman. And she realizes it. Night. The moon timidly peeks out from behind the clouds, not daring to shine brightly and sharply. Most of Ludwig's family is sleeping peacefully. There is no way Killian alone can plunge into the realm of Morpheus. The guy walks on the balcony, looking at the incredible mountain scenery. All of Killian's thoughts are directed to Edith. The young man cannot understand what is happening to his young wife, and most importantly, what he feels for her, apart from hostility. He remembers Edith's hair, dark red-brown, rose color. It is with this flower that the young man associates his wife, with incredibly beautiful, but prickly. Also, Killian remembers the tea party with her sister, brother, and Edith, and more precisely, the dark-haired woman's response to Cliff's words about kindness. A faint smile appears on the young man's face. He is forced to admit that Edith behaved with dignity. She didn't offend anyone and put Cliff in his place at the same time. Someone's thin, high-pitched voice pulls Killian out of his thoughts. The boy shuddered in surprise and opened his eyes wide. He thought everyone was already asleep. The young man turns his head to the side and sees Liza. A girl in only a nightgown and slippers peeks out from the door. Why are you walking around the estate so late, but also alone? Climb, says the young man calmly. He doesn't smile at the blonde like he always did. Lise is worried. She asks Killian what happened. The old man squeezes something like a smile out of himself and says that everything is fine. Just don't sleep somehow. Killian tries not to show his true emotions. He decides to change the subject. 
I heard you ordered new dresses. Mom loves dressing you up in new clothes. Lisa sighs and says she feels guilty every time the Duchess buys her loads of clothes. The girl stands next to Killian and directs her gaze to the Duke's garden. She feels that something is wrong with the boy, but she's not going to question him. Killian still won't say anything. He will only get angry and leave. The guy turns his head in the direction of the blonde. What's your fault? The mother was always jealous of families that had daughters. And Lisa, he adds after a few seconds, you take such good care of her that we should be grateful. The blonde smiles shyly. She is not very good at taking compliments, but there is truth in Killian's words. The Duchess's husband and children were brought up as real knights, so she was always a little lonely. The girl lowers her head and says sadly, Still, I guess buying dresses for Edith would make her happier. Killian frowns. Again, his sister talks about the dark-haired one. As much as possible, she never leaves the young man's head. He barely restrains himself from making a face at the blonde. The guy grits his teeth. Why do you think so? Lee says that Edith has not chosen any dress. The young man opens his eyes wide. What? She decided to remake the dresses she brought with her, the girl continues. She also says that Edith helped the Duchess choose her clothes. Killian is shocked. He even begins to doubt that he is married to Edith Regalhoff. Even too dark-haired differs from the impudent and greedy daughter of the Count, who never wore the same dress twice. The young man looks away from Lise. Ha! He clenches his hands into fists. So it was disgusting for her to buy a dress. And buying a dress for you and your mother is fine, right? Lise does not understand the young man's indignation. She says that the girl didn't mean anything like that, but Killian doesn't listen anymore. He is convinced that Edith did not like the atelier. She wore a vulgar dress to the wedding, says the young man in his mind. Here, of course, the young man bends the stick. Yes, the dress had a deep neckline, but it cannot be called vulgar. In addition, later Edith began to wear only closed clothes. Killian remembers how Edith looked and acted when he went to pick her up this afternoon. Surprisingly, she did not annoy the young man very much. He doesn't want to admit that the dark-haired girl isn't as bad as she's made out to be and jumps to the wrong conclusions. The young man remembers Edith's hair and pale face again. She's disgusting. The young man tries with all his might to convince himself of this, but something does not give him peace. In Killian's head, a picture appears in which Edith is sitting in the bath, surprised by his appearance. Memories change one by one. The last one is related to today. The young man remembers how the dark-haired woman, flashing her eyes, asked him, Are you trying to offend me? Killian thinks he's gone mad. The young man grabs his head, trying to banish the image of Edith Regalhoff from his mind. Lise looks at Killian with concern. She does not know what is happening to him, but guesses that it is somehow related to the dark hair. The blonde dares to ask the young man about his wife. You still don't like Edith. Killian pierces the dark-haired man with a cold gaze. That woman looks like a snake. He says that now she is lying on the floor calmly, but when everyone relaxes, she will show her fangs. The young man huffs contemptuously. Killian, Lise exclaims indignantly. She doesn't understand how a guy can talk about his wife like that. Lise leaves. Killian looks at the girl, but still thinks about Edith. Sooner or later, she will find herself another atelier. Morning. Anna enters the dark-haired woman's room. She picks up one of Edith's perfume bottles. Ma'am, are you almost out of makeup? Call the perfumer. Edith turns her head towards the maid and asks in surprise, Cosmetics? The dark-haired girl had completely forgotten that cosmetics are not replenished just like that. You need to spend money on perfume, blush, and other similar things. Edith wonders, Will I be able to afford to buy cosmetics? The position of the dark-haired woman in this story is unstable, so she saved money to be ready for the situation when she needed it. Edith remembers how she asked the dressmaker to remove the diamonds from the dresses. However, the dark-haired woman has not yet exchanged the jewels for money. The girl crosses her arms over her chest. It's a difficult situation. But Edith is an aristocrat, so she should buy cosmetics, right? It is difficult for the girl to spend money, and all because of a past life. Edith opens her eyes wide and remembers hiding in the toilet and putting old lipstick on her lips. However, now the dark-haired woman decides to enjoy life to the fullest. She smiles and asks Anna to call the perfumer. The maid hurries to fulfill the order of the lady. A perfumer enters the room. He shows the girl various perfumes. After a few minutes, the dark-haired woman freezes in place. What did I just hear? A few minutes ago. The perfumer, a young dark-haired man in elegant clothes, shows Edith another fragrance. Rose Ashley. It smells just amazing. The man says that this fragrance is quite popular among young ladies. 
Edith smiles. Ashley's rose perfume intrigued the dark-haired man. She wants to hear more. The perfumer lists the components of the perfume. The smell of freshly dried grass combined with a light note of Ashley. Wild strawberry and herbal amber. A man can create a fragrance for Edith that is almost identical to this one. What do you think? Asks the perfumer. The girl is interested in the cost of work. Well, the man hesitates a bit. A bottle the size of yours would cost about 90,000 sen. Edith opens her eyes wide. If you translate this amount into the money of the 21st century, it will be almost a million won, more than the girl's monthly budget. Edith lowers her head to hide her shock. Anna notices a change in the mood of her hostess and decides to help her. The maid asks the perfumer what other types of roses are used for perfume. The perfumer smiles and picks up a small bottle of pink perfume. The Titania rose family is often used. They have a rich aroma. But this fragrance is also too heavy for young ladies. The perfumer recommends that Edith buy Ashley's perfume. The dark-haired woman remembers how she used to buy cosmetics in her past life. The sellers were just as persistent. The man does not notice the girl's dissatisfaction and continues to talk about perfumes. Edith covers her ears with her hands. Perfume prices shock her. Anna squints at her mistress. Edith pulls herself together. She gives a forced smile to the perfumer and says she will buy Ashley's fragrance. The maid offers the dark-haired man to mix the scents of two types of roses, Nathaniel and Ashley. Edith does not really understand why Anna advises her to change her perfume. The maid says uncertainly, Maybe you're comfortable with your usual scent, but now that you're a married lady, it would be nice to try something different, something deeper. The perfumer says it's a great compromise. He asks for 130,000 sen for a bottle of the same size as Edith's. Dark-haired is thinking. It is still expensive for her. The girl decides to try to bargain. She puts her hand to her chin, twinkles with soft brown eyes, and offers the perfumer to lower the price by 10,000 sen. The man is not very pleased. What? Then I won't have anything left for work. Anna stares at her mistress. The maid did not think that Edith would spare money for perfume. Still, the girl does not come from a poor family. But if Anna knew what the girl's real life was like, she would not be surprised. Edith offers her husband 125,000. The dark-haired woman realizes that her bargaining looks strange and not very polite, so she hurries to explain everything. You see, I don't want people to say that I spend a lot of money after marriage. In return, the dark-haired man promises the perfumer to contact him next time. The man is smiling. Edith's frugality touches him. He gives in to the girl. Ta smiles widely. Thank you. The brunette was glad she was able to solve this little problem without too much fuss. After a few minutes, the perfumer leaves Edith's room. The girl leans her elbow on the table and sighs. She does not understand why everything in this world is so expensive. Anna bows to Edith. Well, then I'll tell you about the cosmetics you bought. The dark-haired one nods, releasing the maid. Edith examines her purchases, a small bottle of perfume and a makeup brush. They cost the girl one and a half million one. Edith thinks it's just obscenely expensive. The girl feels how a greedy, no, rather thrifty frog is crying inside her. After a few minutes, the dark-haired man decides to analyze the situation. Edith leans back in her chair. Before, I couldn't buy what I wanted because my hands were shaking. The girl was always afraid of spending too much money. However, let's be honest. In the world of aristocrats, the amount that Edith paid for cosmetics is simply nothing. The dark-haired one folds his hands on his knees. She has money. Enough money, but she cannot use them. It's a matter of habit. For a person who was robbed by his own brother in a past life, for a person who valued his salary and used it very carefully, spending money feels like a sin. The girl reaches out. Okay, enough to remember the past. I promised myself to live for myself. As for money, I just need time to splurge on all kinds of luxuries. Besides, there are many ways to enjoy life, and you don't have to pay for everything. Edith's eyes sparkle. She seems to know one such way. The girl turns to the maid. Anna, I will go to the Sextine Hall for a while. After a few minutes, the dark-haired man is already in place. Edith examines this temple of art. The girl gets the impression that she rented a museum. Everything is so organized in this room. The dark-haired man walks deep into the hall, where there are statues carved from white stone. They are very different from each other in shapes and sizes. Edith is impressed. Yes, compared to this beauty, perfumes are pitiful rattles. The girl looks at the paintings on one of the walls and exclaims in amazement, God, are they as detailed as photographs? How did the artists achieve such an effect? Edith notices a painting similar to the work of Monty, an artist whom the dark-haired woman admired in her past life. 
The rays of the sun in this picture look simply incredible, says the girl. Edith does not believe that she can admire these masterpieces live. The dark-haired man approaches the largest painting in the hall. It depicts a knight with a bloody sword on a raven horse. Edith does not have enough words to describe her emotions. This picture makes the viewer forget about everything around and focus on the plot depicted on it. Edith sits down on the floor and leans back. The marble is cold, but it doesn't matter to the girl now. She can't take her eyes off the picture with the stern rider. The image literally absorbs the dark-haired woman, takes away her mind and soul. Edith looks at the picture as if enchanted. That is why she does not hear that someone entered the hall. The dark-haired one snaps back to reality only when he hears a gruff voice. You have a rather unusual way of judging. Edith raises her head and sees in front of her. Killian. A black suit decorated with gold threads, a snow-white shirt, shoes polished to a shine. The guy as always looks perfect. Edith smiles at him. Why are you here? Killian arches an eyebrow. He sees nothing strange that Duke Ludwig's son came to admire his family's works of art. Edith is embarrassed by her own stupid question. The girl looks away from the boy. And that's true. The brunette hopes that Killian won't bully her over this little misunderstanding. But the young man does not miss the opportunity to laugh at his unloving wife. Although the Regelhoffs are not very interested in art, it must be a wonder for you that such a place exists at all. Edith crosses her arms over her chest. She is annoyed that the young man rushes into a conflict. But Edith, as before, is not going to give in to provocations. The girl smiles. Yes, as you said. I'm really impressed. The dark-haired one looks at the image of the rider and sighs enthusiastically. How can there be so many emotions in one picture? Edith begins to describe her impressions of what she saw. It seems to the girl that the artist wanted to show the tragedy of the war and the heroism of the warrior, that is, the horseman. This brave man wants to end human suffering. However, he is not at all happy with the praise from his peers. There is no place for joy in war. Killian stares at Edith. He could not think that the girl would understand the meaning of this picture. The old man crosses his arms over his chest and says that this work is dedicated to his grandfather's victory in the war against the Yanok kingdom. Edith is surprised. She did not know that the Ludwigs fought against the Yanoks. The dark-haired man puts his hand to his chin and suggests that the knight in the picture is Killian's grandfather. The boy smiles evilly. It seems that you really did not know. Killian is glad that he managed to find a gap in the girl's knowledge. A blushing Edith quietly says, Yes, I didn't know. A young man tells his wife that he has never heard of her passion for art. Then why did you come here? He asks somewhat rudely. The girl stands up. Tastes change with age. The dark-haired man is heading towards the exit of the hall. While Killian is here, she won't be able to enjoy the Ludwig family's masterpieces. The guy follows her. He asks if Edith has a favorite author. The dark-haired woman, without stopping, nonchalantly replies that she became interested in art recently, so she does not know any painters or sculptors. None? Killian asks. Edith realizes that the guy is trying to make fun of her again. The girl smiles and repeats his words. Yes, the Regelhoffs are not interested in art. Killian freezes in place at such a cheeky and at the same time polite answer. Parabic is surprised by the girl's endurance. How many times he tried to bring her to emotions, but all in vain. Edith is about to cross the threshold of the hall when she notices an interesting picture. The dark-haired one stops. Wait, this boy. Killian turns his gaze to the painting that caught his wife's attention. The canvas depicts several fluffy white rams, and a boy dressed in the clothes of an ancient Greek shepherd. A seemingly ordinary picture. But Edith was interested in the boy's face. It looks a lot like Killian's face. The old man grits his teeth and says, Edith, that when he was little he was forced to model for a friend of the Duke's. Edith smiles. She didn't even ask about it. The girl bends down to get a better look at the picture, or rather the boy in it. Killian asks the brunette what she's staring at. Nothing, it's just... Edith sharply straightens up and moves away from the picture. He's kind of small. Killian does not immediately understand what the girl is talking about. But when it reaches the young man, he turns red with anger and shame. What? Of course I wasn't the body model for the picture, it's just my face. A ridiculous excuse. Edith, without looking back, says that she understood. However, the mockery in her voice says something else entirely. Killian yells, Isn't it obvious? Can the Duke's son bear his body in front of an artist? Edith repeats that she understands everything. Killian clenches his teeth in rage. What a jerk. The young man did not plan to be in an awkward position. Killian turns sharply and walks away. 
It's impossible to discuss art with you. Edith laughs quietly, enjoying her little triumph. When the boy leaves the hall, slamming the door loudly, the smile on the dark-haired woman's face becomes wider. The girl is sure that jokes will help her survive in this place. Suddenly, the dark-haired man stops. The girl decides to check something. She walks over to the picture of Killian and takes another close look at the boy. Hmm, I think he's getting bigger now. Greenhouse of the Ludwig family. She looks really luxurious, like everything that belongs to the Duke. A high, all-glass roof through which gentle sunlight penetrates. Various plants. All this testifies to the Ducal family's love for beauty and nature. Edith, who had just gone for a morning walk, smiles. What a wonderful weather. The dark-haired woman is wearing a pink dress and a hat of the same color. The girl says that if she could live all her life in this beautiful estate, she would have nothing to wish for. It has been two months since the girl became Edith, an aristocrat who hardly needs to work. The dark-haired woman walks deep into the greenhouse, tapping her purple shoes on the floor. The girl puts her face in the gentle spring sun. Such pleasant fresh air. I wish every day would be like this. Then I would be the happiest person in this world. Edith adapted to family life much faster than she thought. Every day she visits the Sistine Hall, uses luxurious cosmetics, which you cannot regret. The dark-haired man also enjoys food prepared by the country's best chefs. Although there are still people who look at Edith with disgust, the girl's maid respects her very much. The sound of someone's footsteps breaks the dark-haired man out of his thoughts about his fairy tale life. Edith turns her head to the side and sees her former tour guide. Oh, Renan, haven't seen you in a while. The man stops when he notices the girl. How are you? An ordinary formal question, a sign of politeness. Without waiting for an answer, the blonde wonders what Edith is doing here. The girl smiles. Just walking. Edith says that lately she likes to enjoy the beauty of the plants in the greenhouse. Also, the dark-haired woman tells Renan that thanks to his tours, she knows the estate very well and often visits the Sistine Hall. That's great, replies the blonde. Edith asks her husband if he has eaten today. Renan's eyes widen. None of the aristocrats were interested in such things. Redhead drills Edith with a surprised look. The man does not know what to answer to the dark-haired woman's question. The girl tilts her head to the side. What? The man adjusts his glasses and says that everything is fine. Edith thinks that Renan is acting suspiciously, but now is not the time to ask him about it. And the dark-haired man understands this. She tells her husband that she will not distract him from his work. See you later. Edith waves her hand in farewell and leaves the blonde. The man looks after Edith for a few more seconds. Then he adjusts his glasses again, a sign of nervousness. Renan is up to something and he's going to make it happen. Edith goes out to the observation deck. I got here today too without incident. The girl cautiously peeks out from behind a large old tree. She comes here almost every day, just to watch her husband train with Cliff. Every morning the Duke's sons fight with each other on swords. Today the boys, as usual, are as serious as possible and focused on the fight, and half naked. It should be said that both brothers are in excellent physical shape. That is why their training looks interesting. You never know who will win. Today Edith is betting on her husband. The girl carefully observes the progress of the fight. The dark-haired man is infatuated with Killian. This guy with good muscles and a relief back looks simply incredible. Edith is very annoyed by this, but there is no point in denying the beauty of the young man. Dark-haired Killian likes more than Cliff. No, the Duke's eldest son is also handsome. Still, his typically clumsy body is inferior to Killian's muscles. The gray-eyed boy just deflects the elder brother's attack. Edith is happy about it. The girl is already 100% sure that her husband will win. Cliff is somewhat confused today. The dark-haired one smiles. Time to go back. Edith is afraid of being late for lunch. Besides, she had already looked at Killian's body. The dark-haired woman takes a step aside as she notices her husband's smile and look. The girl opens her eyes wide. She hadn't expected Killian to notice her, let alone be so happy to have her here. Edith thinks that this is a dream, and she is almost never wrong. No, the girl isn't asleep, but Killian really isn't looking at her. The boy gave his smile to Liza, who was passing by the training ground. Edith is disappointed. The dark-haired girl understands that the idea that Killian has feelings for her is ridiculous and even childish, but she can't help herself. Cabinet of Duchess Ludwig. Edith deals with the papers. Today the girl does her work not very carefully. Killian's smile does not leave the dark-haired woman's head. The girl had never seen such a handsome young man, even in a past life. Edith exhales loudly. Yes, take it easy, you need to focus on work. Today, the main task of the girl is to sort out the documents for the weapons and armor of the family. 
Edith picks up a stack of papers. Information about the arms of the duchy is very important. The dark-haired girl wonders why she was assigned to analyze such documents. Does the duke's family trust Edith? The dark-haired girl hears the sound of someone's footsteps. The girl opens her eyes wide and tilts her head to one side. Edith sees Lise in front of her. The blonde asks the dark-haired one what she is doing. The girl smiles. I am distributing the information from the documents that my mother gave me on the tables. Lise asks what the table is. She had never heard of such a word. Edith explains that this is a brief overview of the information from the document. The blonde opens her eyes wide. She still doesn't really understand what the dark-haired man is talking about. Edith is no less shocked than the blonde. The girl guesses that there is no such thing as a table in this world, and it's a little strange. After all, from the point of view of history, something similar to a table has existed since ancient times. Although the author of the novel, in which the dark-haired man lives, could well have created a world without tables. Perhaps he did this because plain documents visually look better than tables. However, tables are very easy to use. Edith tells Lisa about it. The girl is sure that a smart blonde will definitely notice the effectiveness of such a recording method. Lise thinks, um, to be honest, wouldn't it be a little uncomfortable for other people? Edith huffs and puffs. Tables are great, but maybe the girl really rushed the innovation. The Duchess enters the office. She notices Edith's upset and asks what happened. Lise greets her mother and says that everything is fine. Edith just wanted to ask something. The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide. She is shocked by Lisa's behavior. The Duchess tells the blonde that she helps Edith a lot. Lise smiles. This situation reminds Edith of her past life. When the girl worked in the office, colleagues often asked her opinion on various documents and then told the manager that it was they who helped her. Edith understands that in this world, people will also mistake her merits for their own, and it's terribly unfair. Edith lowers her eyes, thinking what to do to her. In the end, the dark-haired man decides to tell everything to the Duchess. The girl turns to the woman and asks her opinion about the tables. Tables? asks the Duchess. Edith shows the woman one of the tables. There is a lot of information in the documents, so I decided to organize it this way. Here I enter the type of weapon and here, basic information about each item. The girl points her finger at two more cells, which indicate the quantity and cost of weapons to be purchased. Lise watches the Duchess and Edith in silence. The blonde is not very happy with the behavior of the dark-haired one. Edith continues to say, If you design like this, you will be able to understand at a glance what you need. Finally, the girl notices that Lise has been silent all this time. Edith looks at the blonde. Lise looks angry and upset. I just openly spoke out against her, Edith realizes. The dark-haired woman mentally chastises herself. She was going to move away from the image of a criminal, but now she shows contempt for the main character. Edith smiles. Actually, Lise advised me. Yes, the dark-haired woman hates to say this, but she sees no other way out of this situation. The Duchess looks over the document Edith has arranged once more. After a few seconds, the woman says that this is brilliant. The information in the tables is written briefly, so it is easy to understand at a glance. The Duchess asks the girl how she came up with this. It seems that the woman did not pay attention to the words of the dark-haired woman about helping Liza. Edith is surprised by the Duchess's reaction. Did she like it? The woman smiles warmly. This is a great way. From now on, you should try to organize all your documents like this. The woman asks Edith if she can arrange all the documents she is currently working with in the form of tables. The woman wants to watch the work of the dark-haired woman and learn. Read with praise, Edith's eyes sparkle. Of course, mother. The girl is happy that at least someone in this family appreciated her abilities. Edith begins to explain something to the Duchess. Lise drills Edith with a somewhat angry look. The blonde is used to the fact that all the attention of others belongs only to her. It should be the center of the universe. She, not Edith. Library. Killian, dressed in a business suit, stands by the table and looks at the document Edith was working with. The Duchess decided to show her son the results of the dark-haired woman's work. The guy asks the woman if Edith really came up with the method of organizing data using a grid. The Duchess smiles. Exactly. The woman also says that Edith is a very smart girl. Lise, who is removing documents from the table, listens to the conversation between Killian and his mother. Parabach takes another look at the document. It certainly looks quite effective. However, in such a compressed form, the information is easy to take outside the estate. The Duchess understands what the boy is implying, so she hurries to stop him. Killian. The woman asks the young man, isn't Edith just as much a hostage to circumstances as he is? The Duchess smiles sadly. 
It's even worse for her. She left her native home and found herself surrounded by complete strangers. The woman gently takes her son by the sleeve and asks him to show at least a drop of sympathy for the dark-haired woman. The boy thinks about his mother's words. The young man is torn between thoughts about Edith's cunning and her innocence. Someone softly knocks on the door. Killian frowns. The boy does not like to be distracted from his thoughts. Renan looks into the room. The man apologizes for such an audacious intervention. The red-haired man says that he did not know that the young man was also here. If I'm in the way, the man lowers his head, I can come in later, the Duchess reassures Renan. No, everything is fine. You are very timely. I just wanted to show you something. Can you come over here? Killian drills his mother with a displeased look. But the woman does not pay attention to this. She tells the blonde about the documents he gave Edith this morning. Killian hears a rustle and looks away. He sees Lise. The girl has sparkling blue eyes. The boy approaches her. Mother seems to be pleased with Edith. And what do you say? The blonde lowers her eyes and forcedly smiles. Lise says that the words of the Duchess are true. Edith is really quite an intelligent and educated girl. Unlike me, a person who received no education while in the Sinclair family. Even if Edith doesn't know something, she learns faster than me. Lise squeezes the fabric of her dress. Killian thinks. It seems to him that something is wrong here. Liza's behavior is rather strange. The blonde's words and gestures show her envy of Edith. But how is this possible? Lise and envy are antonyms. Besides, the blonde is not a stupid girl at all. Before becoming an assistant to the Duchess, she spent four years learning how to work with documents in the duchy. If Edith is so good that Lise is even jealous of her, then it is not a matter of intelligence. Killian thinks that the dark-haired girl's father has been teaching her different paper handling techniques for years. And he did it, of course, not just like that. The boy remembers what the dark-haired woman told him about the largest painting in the Sistine Hall. Yes, Edith is not the idiot she is rumored to be. Six o'clock in the morning. The sun slowly rises from behind the horizon, dispersing the soft purple clouds that remind us of the recent domination of the night. Someone knocks on Edith's room. The girl wakes up and, throwing a thin white robe over her shoulders, goes to the door. The dark-haired man is surprised to see Killian on the doorstep. The guy, despite the early hour, is dressed as if he is going to a ball, that is, flawlessly. The expression on his face is cold and stern, familiar to Edith. The dark-haired woman smiles and asks the boy what happened at such an hour. Edith approaches the young man closer. Did you come because you wanted to see me? Killian walks into the room, leaving the girl behind. But with a note of sadness in his voice, he says, Of course not. The young man asks if Edith wants him to get to the point and get out of here. The dark-haired one tilts his head to the side. Like if I ask you to stay a few minutes longer than you have to, you'll agree. Killian looks around. You're pretty smart. You can tell by the boy's tone that this is not a compliment. Edith replies that she was not taught to lose. The young man sighs. You can see it. The dark-haired man can barely contain his laughter. Every time she sees Killian, she wants to play a prank on him. And this despite the fact that, according to the original story, Edith will have to beg Killian for mercy when he will stand before her with a saber in his hands. The young man silently looks out the window. Apparently he is going with his thoughts. Edith wonders why he came to her room so early. Has Count Regelhoff come up with some kind of provocation again? The girl starts going through the possible reasons for Killian's visit in her head. I wasn't caught spying on him, was I? If not, maybe it's because of Lise and the situation with the documents? Dark-haired already regrets that she proposed anew for this world way of processing documents. Edith decides to distract the boy so that he does not start scolding her. The girl smiles and talks about the wonderful weather outside. Banal, but at least something. Killian watches his wife. Edith looks out the window to avoid eye contact with the young man. Killian narrows his eyes. It dawns on him that the dark-haired man just wants to drag out a serious conversation. The young man does not like it. He bangs his hand on the window, almost breaking the glass. Edith's smile disappears. The girl does not really understand what is happening. She's afraid she's pissed off Killian too much with her chatter. Perhaps, says Edith in her mind, he will kill me right now. But fortunately, she is wrong. Killian moves closer to his wife. Edith's cheeks are red. Yes, the murder scenario would have been less unexpected for the dark-haired woman than that. Killian ignores the girl's reaction. He leans into her ear. Edith closes her eyes. Too close, the boy whispers. Mother's favorite atelier is too noble and elegant, so it could not satisfy your vulgar taste. Edith is even more surprised. 
She can't believe that Killian chose to pick on her for not getting herself a single new thing. The dark-haired woman thought that the young man would like her frugality. On the contrary, you, the young man says through gritted teeth, are known for their habit of not wearing the same dress twice and didn't buy a single one then. Killian smirks and tells Edith that even her methods of protest are primitive. Edith frowns. The girl is very offended. She grips the window handle with her fingers and says to herself, I just didn't start ordering new dresses to change my outrageous and spendthrift image. And even that became a reason to hate me. The dark-haired girl grits her teeth in anger. Killian is pleased with her reaction. If you want to say something, say it frankly. I'm listening carefully. The girl does not hold back and sharply turns to face the boy. Killian is impressed. Edith clearly and loudly tells the boy that he knows nothing about her. The dark-haired woman walks away from Killian. If I didn't like that studio, I'd just find another one. The girl leads to the fact that she does not look like a person who would be stopped by someone else's opinion. Edith puts her hand to her chest and glares angrily. You're just looking for a reason to hate me. The girl tells the young man that he is trying in any way to convince himself that she is the reason. Killian freezes in place. What? He is outraged and shocked at the same time. Edith's words are pure truth. The young man simply cannot admit this to himself. Dark-haired continues. I understood everything from the moment I entered the hall during the wedding ceremony. Even then you made it clear that you hate and despise me. The girl talks about the incident with the engagement ring, which Killian put on himself. Because of this, all the guests laughed at the dark-haired woman. Edith is sure that the boy blames her for everything in order to calm down. In the head of the dark-haired girl, a memory appears from the evening after the wedding ceremony, when Killian attacked his young wife for taking a bath alone. The girl looks into the boy's eyes. As if you are the only victim, you're acting like a coward. Killian drills the dark-haired man with a suitably devastating look. Looks like these two are going to start fighting now, but the boy manages to control himself. He finally realizes that physically abusing Edith is too much. Besides, he has no reason to treat her like that. The young man decides to act differently. He smiles evilly. That's how it is. Killian says that Edith became his wife only because she threatened his family. The girl says that she did not do it personally. The old man flashes his eyes triumphantly. So you mean you're not part of the Regalhoff family? Are you different from your father and brother? Edith opens her eyes wide. Now everything is clear to her. To everyone in this estate, Killian's young wife is just Regalhoff. Edith lowers her head. After a few seconds, Edith tells the young man that he doesn't know anything about her. Killian's eyes widen. These words made an impression on the young man. An inner voice tells the boy that the dark-haired man is not lying. The girl smiles sadly and repeats, Nothing. Edith so wants the young man to believe in this, but she knows that this will not happen. Killian barely perceptibly flinches at the girl's gaze. For the first time, the young man does not know how to behave with Edith. With the real Edith, not with the image he himself created. An image woven from the hearsay of aristocrats. The old man turns his back to the girl. I heard that you help your mother well. Don't even think about doing anything suspicious. That's the only advice I can give you. Killian leaves the dark-haired room. Edith is sure that she will never forget this short but humiliating conversation for her. The girl sinks to the floor. Seriously, why am I so surprised? As if this is the first time. The dark-haired sobs quietly, hugging himself by the shoulders. Edith tells herself that it is useless to hope that Killian will develop feelings for her. The only thing left for the dark-haired man is to enjoy the luxurious life and find a way to escape from here. Killian leans his back against the door of the girl's room. The young man hears Edith crying and feels ashamed of his behavior, no matter how strange it sounds. Killian had never considered that Edith was a person and not a chess piece in the game between Regalhoff and Ludwig. The guy lowers his head. And what should I do now? Parabach recalls Edith's look of incomprehension and despair when he told her that she was part of the Regalhoff family. Killian doesn't understand how he could even say that. Perhaps, suggests the young man. I had no idea what I was talking about because of the aroma of roses that wafted through her room. Killian mentally admits that his wife is very beautiful, especially her hair and lips. As we already know, Edith told the young man that he knew absolutely nothing about her, and Killian really believes it. He mentally notes that during their short conversations, the girl never once spoke ill of him. The old man finally admits to himself that since meeting the dark-haired woman, he has not seen her outside the image of the licentious daughter of Count Regalhoff. But according to all the information that Killian has, there is not a single line about Count Regalhoff. During the entire stay at the estate, Edith never once mentioned her father. The guy puts his hand to his forehead. 
Recently, Killian often has headaches for no particular reason. Suddenly, someone calls a young man. He looks away. The young man sees Lise, dressed in a white dress with a blue bow on the collar. The girl has a folder with some documents in her hands. Probably the blonde was in her mother's office. Lise greets the man, but he does not answer her. From the expression on Killian's face, the blonde understands that something has happened. Killian? She repeats worriedly. Lise approaches the young man and asks what's wrong with his face. Killian flinches slightly. He definitely likes the blonde, but right now he wants to be alone for a while. Lise, without waiting for an answer, touches the boy's forehead with her hand. Maybe the girl thinks Killian is sick. He smells the scent of violets. Killian associates the blonde with a wild wildflower that has just bloomed. Lisa is so real and simple. The girl, who has no idea about the boy's thoughts, says that there is no temperature. Killian smiles. It's okay, Lisa, don't worry. Parabach mentally notes that the smell of roses that filled Edith's room is simply sickening. The guy is sure that it was this aroma that made his mind numb. Killian sighs in relief. He found yet another excuse for his behavior. The young man hugs Lisa by the shoulders. He says that they are blondes, that his mood is a little spoiled because of a conversation with a not very nice girl. The blonde understands, the young man says, and is indignant. Killian clenches his hand into a fist. Lunch brought? Anna enters Edith's room. Did you want something, ma'am? The maid is somewhat surprised. The dark-haired one didn't call her often, especially in the morning. Edith, who was looking out the window all this time, turns her head to Anna's side and smiles. Let's go for a walk together? The dark-haired girl hopes that the maid will agree. In her past life, Edith always ordered a large iced Americano when she was sad. And then she wandered around the city with a cup of coffee in her hands, looking at the passers-by, busy with their thoughts. Now Edith also wants to go for a walk. Fortunately, Anna says she doesn't mind a little walk. I'll just warn the Duchess and prepare a dress for you, adds the maid. The dark-haired one smiles. Because of the imprisonment within the four walls, Edith feels depressed. Even the Sistine Hall and the Duke's greenhouse no longer impress the girl as much as in the first days of her stay at the estate. Fifteen minutes later, Edith descends the marble stairs. If you think about it, the girl notes, after moving into this body I never walk down the street. The mood of the dark-haired girl improves as soon as she leaves the territory of the estate. Edith is dressed in a white shirt with pink ruffles and a crimson skirt. Hannah asks the girl where they are going. Dark-haired thinks, I don't even know. Edith doesn't mind going anywhere, as long as it's away from the Duke's estate. The girl decides that it would be nice to take a walk on the main street first. How do you like the idea, Anna? She asks. The maid says that the place of the walk depends on what Edith wants to do. If a girl wants to visit a good atelier in several jewelry stores, Lebel Marie Street is a good choice. Cultural institutions are located on Darsa Street, art galleries, museums, and opera houses. You can also find several specialized shops there. However, the most famous place on this street is the confectionery Peridot. Strawberry cake and other delicacies made, there are very popular among the city's residents. Edith is surprised by Anna's awareness of such matters. The girl asks the maid if she could find a good jeweler for her. Hmm, says Anna. Let's think about it. If we talk about jewelry stores, then Amabile has been working for quite a long time. You can trust the craftsmen working there. The maid says there are two other good shops, Datrius, which opened relatively recently and Ruth Pecan, located just off the main street. I recommend these three stores, Anna concludes. Edit processes the received information. The girl admits that the maid impressed her. The dark-haired woman could not even think that Anna is an encyclopedic character who explains all the intricacies of the world for the convenience of the reader. Mrs.? The maid's voice brings the girl back to reality. Edith smiles and says she wants to go to Rue d'Arsois. The dark-haired woman wants to deal with some of the jewelry she took off her clothes. Anna says that the carriage is waiting on the opposite side of the street. Half an hour later, Edith and the maid leave the jewelry store, saying goodbye to its owners. The dark-haired man lists the money received for the jewelry. Just look, four million nine hundred thousand five million. They paid well. Anna looks up at her mistress. The maid does not really understand why Edith exchanged the jewelry for money. Wealthy aristocrats, to which the girl belongs, usually do not do this. Dark hair says that the diamonds were quite small, but they were very expensive. By the way, she turns to Anna, the bank is on the same street. The maid replies that yes. Another half hour passes. Anna and Edith come out of a large brick building in the classicist style. The dark-haired woman stretches herself contentedly. Finally, I'm done with all the work. She was a little worried because she didn't know how the local bank worked. 
Fortunately, setting up a bank account was not as difficult as Edith thought. In any case, there is no such thing as ID in this society, so she used a pseudonym. The girl put her money in the bank for her own peace of mind. The estate is not the best place for them. Still, the dark-haired woman does not know when and for what she can be kicked out of the family. Edith smiles at Anna. There was a lot to do today. She offers the maid to eat something delicious at a local restaurant. Anna does not object. After a few minutes, the ladies are already sitting at the table and waiting for their orders. Finally, the waiter brings the food. Edith cuts off a piece of grilled fish. The girl thinks what else she needs to do to prepare for possible trouble. The dark-haired woman already has a financial cushion. Now it's worth learning more about this world in general, because you never know when you'll have to run. Edith asks Anna how common people travel. The maid replies that the most popular folk ways of traveling are renting a carriage or paying for a ticket in a freight car of a train. The dark-haired man is surprised that people have to drive in such conditions. Anna says that although the freight cars are very cramped and cold, the commoners have no other choice. Passenger seats are too expensive. As for routes and distances in the empire, everything is quite simple. The train to the town next to the capital leaves from the station near the southern gate of the capital. In the town itself, you can rent a room in inns. This service costs approximately 3,000 sen. A small house will cost more, 7 to 8,000 sen, depending on the area. Of course, there is a way not to pay for housing, but in this case, you will have to settle in a stable. Edith has learned quite a bit about traveling in this world, but she still has a few questions. The girl looks at Anna. It is unlikely that the servant of the Ludwig family will not report on the escape of the dark-haired woman and will not tell everything she knows about it. That is why Edith decides to end the questioning. Anna, having just finished her meal, turns to her mistress. Do you need anything else? Edith smiles and says that there is enough work for today. She thanks the maid for the company. Ludwig Family Library. Edith is sitting in a large beige chair and reading a book about farming. Dark-haired thinks that he can grow fruits and vegetables and make money from it. Of course, if such a need arises. Suddenly, Edith hears a knock on the door. The girl opens her eyes wide, covers her face with a book and asks who has come. Anna enters the library. Dark-haired asks what happened. Usually, the maid didn't bother her just like that. Anna says that the Duchess is looking for Edith. To the question, why Anna the servant answers that a jeweler has arrived at the estate. Edith puts the book down. Jeweler? The dark-haired one looks excited. The fact is that in the original story, the arrival of the jeweler was a complete humiliation for the girl and another small step towards her own death. The visit of the craftsman from the Opalit store is an episode when Edith received merit in the Ludwig's house. She was not very polite to Lise, as a result of which she herself found herself in an awkward position. The dark-haired man recalls the details of this situation. The Duchess, her sons Lise and Edith gathered in one of the rooms to choose the ladies' decorations, all family members, as always, paid attention only to Liza. Killian and Cliff offered the blonde various jewelry. The Duchess also gave the girl her advice. However, Lise did not feel very comfortable because everyone had forgotten about Edith. The dark-haired one was sitting opposite the blonde. Edith looked upset. Of course, who would like it when your man chooses jewelry for another girl? Lise understood this. The blonde didn't want Edith to feel deprived, so she stopped the discussion of jewelry. Wait! Everyone fell silent at once. The blonde pointed to one of the necklaces and smiled. This jewelry will suit Edith, won't it? Lise hoped that in this way she would be able to help the dark-haired woman. But the blonde did only worse. The decoration that she advised Edith was completely nondescript. This angered the dark-haired. How do you have such confidence that this necklace will fit me? The dark-haired man then makes a rude comment about Lise's eyesight and taste. I hope you are not speaking of me in an ironic manner, Edith adds. The puzzled blonde says, Why is this not so? She tries to explain to the dark-haired woman that she just wanted to do the best she could. But Edith doesn't let her say a word. Although I liked the other decorations. For example, a special exhibit. After the girl's speech, Cliff bought all the jewelry for Lisa, except for the one she recommended to the dark-haired woman. Now Edith got a chance to change everything. A room with decorations. Cliff advises Lisa one necklace. The jeweler tricks the boy. Edith watches the Duchess her sons and Lise in silence. The dark-haired woman feels embarrassed by the complete lack of attention to herself. The master is interested in the opinion of the duchess about the diamond necklace. The woman smiles and says that it is different from the white pearl necklace she bought last time. Cliff shows Lisa some beautiful and certainly expensive jewelry. The girl enthusiastically exclaims, My God, it's a diamond again. The duchess laughs at the blonde's reaction. 
Edith's expression is rather sad. Usually during the visits of various masters, Edith takes an active part in the discussion of certain things. But not today. Today is a strange day in general. The only thing that hasn't changed is Killian's behavior. The guy did not pay attention to Edith and is not going to do it. Instead, he actively communicates with Lise. Just accept our gifts. In general, the dark-haired woman did not want to meet with the jeweler today because she did not want to see Killian. In addition, feeling deprived is quite unpleasant. The dark-haired girl decides to distract herself from observing the happy Ducal family and look at the decorations offered by the master. The girl's gaze clings to a necklace with blue stones. Edith wonders how much such beauty costs. Liza's exclamation, Wait! breaks the girl out of her thoughts. Looks like we're approaching the climax of this episode. Bilyavka turns to Edith. The dark-haired woman pulls her hand away from the necklace. The girl hopes she didn't look disappointed. Lise shows the dark-haired woman one of the many necklaces and says that it will suit her. Edith looks up at the decoration and freezes in place. The girl likes the necklace Lisa chose. It looks simple and elegant at the same time, and the red jewel will emphasize Edith's hair. The girl smiles. God, it's really good. Is that a ruby? Dark-haired makes sure that Lise is not just beautiful and smart. She also has excellent taste. The jeweler tells Edith that it is a ruby of the highest quality. The design of the gold chain and setting of the stone is a high-quality work of the best jewelers in the store. The duchess offers the girl to try on the necklace. The dark-haired woman reaches for the decoration. The girl turns her head to the side and turns to her husband. Killian? Edith hopes that he will agree to fasten the ornament. Surprisingly, the young man does not contradict. He approaches the dark-haired woman and takes the necklace in his hands. Turn your back. In a somewhat rude tone, Killian demonstrates his reluctance to touch Edith. The girl removes the hair on her left shoulder, giving the young man access to her thin neck. The guy with the most serious and focused expression on his face fastens the jewelry chain. Edith wonders why he didn't say something derogatory to her or refuse to help at all. The point is that they are not alone. In the room are Lise, Cliff, and most importantly, the Duchess. Killian is not going to behave with his wife in the usual manner in front of his mother. The young man does not want to upset the Duchess. Edith also decides to play the role of a happy wife in front of this lovely woman. The dark-haired girl smiles charmingly at Killian and asks if he likes the jewelry. The boy directs his gaze at the dark-haired man and freezes in place. He is struck by Edith's beauty. This girl looks not only beautiful, but somehow charming. Killian quickly turns his head to the side so no one thinks he's staring at Edith, even though he is. Quite well. The young man tries to speak as dryly as possible. Reddened by the pleasant words, Edith smiles. Really? Killian, on whose cheeks a barely noticeable blush also appeared, asks the jeweler for the bill for the ruby necklace. The master briefly leaves the room. Cliff says that this is Killian's first gift to his wife. What a wonderful man. In the eyes of the duke's eldest son, a humorous light flares up. The young man also says that he will buy the rest of the jewelry for Liza. But the duchess seems to be against such an idea. Cliff, if you do that, Edith will get nothing. Killian intervenes in the conversation. He says he didn't want to buy more than he planned, and he planned to buy only one piece of jewelry. Cliff smiles slyly. Edith hurries to convince the Duchess that the ruby necklace is enough for her. If that's true, then good, the woman says uncertainly. The dark-haired man closes his eyes and clenches his hand into a fist. A girl wonders how much money she could get from selling one large piece of jewelry. It is clear that it is a lot. After all, this is the creation of one of the most talented jewelers of the Empire. What? Edith abruptly stops her own thoughts about selling jewelry. The girl reaches for the necklace. I will not be able to sell this jewelry, even in a difficult situation. Still, this is my first, and probably my last gift from Killian. Evening. Edith, dressed in a white off-the-shoulder home dress, sits on a chair by the fireplace. The girl mercilessly throws numerous invitations to aristocratic parties into the flames. It seems that the original Edith was very fond of attending such events. Even when the dark-haired woman got married, she continued to be invited to parties. But one leaf escapes the flame. Edith puts an envelope on her lap, with a crimson seal in the form of a twisted branch, very similar to the coat of arms of Count Riegelhoff. The dark-haired one takes out the letter. Edith, read carefully. The first words are already straining the girl. The Count clearly wrote to his daughter for a reason. He says he gave Edith enough time to get used to the Ludwig family, but he's tired of waiting. The man reminds the dark-haired woman about her part of the job. From the letter, Edith learns that her father has received information about her work with the Duchy's papers. 
The Count says that if there are reports on weapons among the documents, then they must be stolen. If it is problematic to do this, you can simply make a note of the content of the necessary documents. I will wait for a reply confirming the work done. Edith finishes reading the last lines. The girl is thinking. The situation is not bad, but unpleasant. He knows I'm helping the Duke family with the documents, Edith says in her mind. Most likely the Count is hinting at the presence of a Regalhof man in Ludwig's estate, and this person can be anyone, even some maid. Edith narrows her eyes. The girl's father is in his repertoire. He is simply obsessed with the idea of improving his position by gradually destroying the duchy. For the sake of realizing his dream, a man is ready to risk even his own daughter. Edith takes out a pen and a piece of paper from a drawer. Well, says the girl, I'll try to write an answer. The mocking smile on Edith's face makes it clear that the dark-haired woman is up to something. The girl begins the letter with a formal greeting. After that, she begins to paint the stability and power of the Duchy of Ludwig. The dark-haired woman closes her eyes. She can already imagine how her father will be surprised and angry when he reads these words. The girl writes that it is almost impossible to shake the stability of the duchy. Besides, to be honest, Edith sighs with mock tragedy, I haven't done anything wrong since moving to the Ludwig estate, have I? The dark-haired one smiles out of the corner of his mouth. She writes that the noble title is in all aspects the will and power of His Majesty the Emperor. Why do you hate the Ludwig family so much? Edith asks. Now the country is ruled by His Majesty the Emperor, and despite the lack of experience, he performs his duties quite well. In addition, he has an assistant, a princess sister. Edith believes that there are no circumstances under which the Archduke Lanciton could become the ruler of the empire. That is why the enmity of the wolves Ludwig and the snakes Rigelhoff will definitely end in the defeat of the Count. Darkhaired suggests that his father abandoned the betrayal of the Emperor to develop the strengths of Rigelhoff under the leadership of the Ludwig family. Sincerely yours, Edith. The dark-haired man puts down his pen and starts laughing wildly. She had never had such pleasure in writing letters. Well, there is a first time for everything. Edith is proud of herself, because she finally told her father everything she wanted. After a few minutes, the girl calms down. The dark-haired one puts the quill in the inkwell, leans back in the chair and stretches. The Count is unlikely to give up his ambitions, but his married daughter is not concerned. However, Edith's efforts only harmed her. Duke's office. The man sits at his desk and drills Edith with a stern look. You trampled your father and the honor of the family in the mud. A few minutes ago, the same office of the Count. The sun penetrates into the room through large windows clean to a shine. The ticking of the desk clock is heard. The office door is closed. Two guards in knightly armor are standing near them. The Duke asks Edith if she passed the Ludwig family documents to a third party. The girl, without thinking for a moment, answers that she didn't do it. Edith is very scared, but she holds herself confidently because she knows that any careless gesture can arouse suspicion in the Duke. And he doesn't really trust Edith anyway. The man looks into the girl's eyes, even if you swear by your father's honor. The Duke is sure that Edith betrayed his family. That is why he tries to force a confession out of her in every way. However, the girl, to the Duke's surprise, swears not only on her father's honor, but also on her own. The dark-haired one thinks she said everything right, but no. The Duke is openly hostile. You just trampled your father and family honor in the mud. His sons and Renan are standing next to the man. The girl almost jumps out of her seat. What are you talking about? Edith does not understand what is happening and why she is accused of treason. She never did anything suspicious. The Duke sighs tiredly and turns to Renan. He hands the blonde a stack of papers. Give it to Edith. The man immediately obeys the order. Edith looks through the papers. They look familiar to her. Aren't these the documents you recently instructed me to sort through? Herzog says it is. These documents are fake. Their data has no value, adds the man. He seems happy with his idea of giving Edith fake papers. Actually, it wasn't that simple. The Duke did not want the girl to suspect something, so he ordered Renan to prepare documents with false information. Rusiavi is known for business papers. Renan tries not to look at Edith. The man is ashamed of the fact that he deceived the dark-haired man. The Duke continues... Your father's sale of the items on this list is proof of your guilt. My father? asks the dark-haired man. Renan glares at the girl. He can't believe that she will continue to prove her innocence even after seeing the physical evidence. But as we already know, Edith was not taught to lose. The girl calmly but firmly says, I'm sorry, but I don't understand what the problem is, Your Grace. Edith suggests that there must be another reason why the man entrusted her with the forged documents. The girl also repeats that she was just doing her job, 
and did not pass on information to anyone. The Duke frowns. Even in such a situation, you pretend to be an innocent sheep. Cliff flashes his yellow eyes and smiles mockingly. The boy is amused by the behavior of the dark-haired woman. The Duke asks Edith how the data, known only to her, got into the hands of the Count. The girl answers the question. Information known only to me? The girl leads to the fact that she was not the only one who saw these documents. Renan, who is in charge of the papers, servants present in the Duchess's office. After all, the Duchess herself and Lise, they all had access to the data. So you're blaming people, loyal Ludwigs or even members of our family. The Duke grits his teeth in rage. He took Edith's words as an insult. In fact, it's just a fact, nothing more. The dark-haired woman noticed that the Duke called her Edith Regelhoff, even though she was married. Come to think of it, that's how it was in the original. After the wedding of Killian and Edith, the dark-haired woman was never addressed as Edith Ludwig. And the girl is angry. After all, it was the Duke and her Count who led their children to a sham marriage. Edith clutches a fan in her hand. The girl cannot bear such disrespect, so she asks the Duke what Lady Lisa's name is. Lisa Ludwig. The man and his sons freeze in place from such audacious, in their opinion, behavior. After a few seconds, the Duke tells Edith to watch her tongue. The man again misunderstands Edith's words. The girl in no way wanted to offend Liza. The dark-haired woman puts her hand to her chest. I'll repeat myself, but both the Duchess and Lady Lise knew that I was sorting through the documents. I guessed that I would be the first person you would suspect in such a situation. The girl waves her hand with the papers and says that if the Duke didn't trust her, he wouldn't have instructed her to dig through the fake documents. You wouldn't let me touch the papers at all. Edith's eyes twinkle. Then the girl directs an angry look at the Duke. You wanted to press Count Regelhoff, but for that you needed to confirm my involvement in the data leak. The man froze in place in shock, as did Killian. Edith lowers her head and sighs. The girl is tired of proving to everyone around her that she is a person and not a weapon of Count Regelhoff. The dark-haired girl has no idea how the documents could have gotten into her father's hands if she had said she wouldn't tell him anything. Someone is definitely behind this. I wonder who exactly. The first suspect is Renan, who forged documents on the Duke's orders. However, Edith does not think that it was the blonde who leaked the information. Lise couldn't do it either. A spy whose presence in the estate was hinted at by the Count was probably involved in this. As Edith had previously suggested, the spy must be someone inconspicuous. For example, some maid. On the other hand, the spy theory is so-so. The Count would not have given his daughter in marriage to the son of enemies if Ludwig had his own man on the estate. In the original story, the transfer of documents is Edith's job. According to the plot, as soon as the girl began to help the Duchess, all the information immediately fell into the hands of Regelhoff. The Count was very pleased with his daughter's work. However, the Duke was no fool either. In the original, as in reality, the Duke did not trust Edith with the real documents. Thus, the Ludwigs simply circled the Count around their finger. The dark-haired man was exposed and punished for violating his probation, Edith forever remained an outcast of society. No aristocrat wanted to communicate with a traitor. The girl again compares the original episode with her situation. Dark-haired did not manage to turn the events in his favor. Perhaps this is a sign that she cannot go against the original. Edith thinks what she should do. Surrender now or fight for her life and honor. But why? Why fight if no one will believe her anyway? The dark-haired man raises his head and directs his gaze at Killian. It seems to the girl that she will continue to fall to the bottom until she dies at the hands of her husband. The young man notices that he is being stared at. Surprisingly, there is no hatred or disgust for Edith in his eyes. You can see only complete confusion in them. Killian was confused. He no longer even believes himself. Tears appear in Edith's eyes. The dark-haired one cannot stand such pressure from the members of the ducal family. But it's not just about that. Edith doesn't understand why even in her new life she can't just be happy. The girl hurries to wipe away her tears. Don't cry, you fool, or they'll think it's manipulation. After a few minutes, Edith calms down and turns to the Duke. Didn't I tell you before? I swear on my honor and my life. Killian begins to worry when he hears these words. And not for nothing. Edith tells the Duke that he can cut her throat if he is so sure that she is the one who gave the information to the Earl. What the? Killian exclaims. Edith had gone too far. The girl should be more careful because she does not know what Duke Ludwig is capable of. Killian, who like most of the characters dislikes Edith, also looks concerned. He leans over to the Duke and asks if it would be better to do some further investigation first. 
The boy directs his gaze at the dark-haired man and flashes his eyes. Of course, the suspect will be forbidden to go outside. The Duke sighs. Okay, I'll put Edith on probation. The man tells the girl that she should pray for the truth to come out. Of course, if she is really innocent. The girl seems disappointed with the Duke's decision. A probationary period, as in the original, will not lead to anything good. Edith thinks she would rather die now. In any case, it is better than enduring constant humiliation from the aristocrats for a long time, and then perishing at the hands of your own husband. Killian says he will take Edith to her room. Without waiting for the Duke's consent, the young man grabs the dark-haired man's hand. Edith wants to stop Killian, but he, without turning to his wife, orders her to just follow him. Those present in the office drew attention to Killian's strange behavior. The Duke sighs. It seems to the man that now if his son does not kill him, he will definitely maim Edith. But the Duke is wrong. Killian isn't just mad at his wife. He is afraid for her. The boy drags Edith along the corridor. The girl tries to resist, but the young man is stronger than her. Finally, Killian pulls up outside Edith's room and starts yelling, Are you out of your mind? The dark-haired one turns his head to the side. It would be nice if it was like that. But Killian is not kidding. Parabox says that on the battlefield, Duke Axel Ludwig was called Thug. These words do not make any impression on the girl. Killian continues, You propose to cut the throat of a man who, if necessary, would not hesitate to kill his own and enemy soldiers and prisoners? Edith finally gives the young man a look. Now you're annoyed by what I said about the cutthroat? She asks. Killian freezes in place, eyes wide. Edith surprises him more and more. It finally dawns on the boy that the dark-haired woman is so tired of insults that she is not against dying. Killian admits to himself that he behaved too rudely. He takes a step towards Edith. The young man says, If you are the one who committed the crime, then of course you will be punished. If not, the truth will come out. But the dark-haired man is not reassured by Killian's words. The girl turns her back to him and smiles defiantly. If you don't trust me, I won't trust you either. I think that for you, I am a criminal. What? Killian asks. Edith enters her room. The girl sits on the table. She tells the guy with complete confidence that it was he who gave her the fake documents. By the way, investigation and punishment? This is also what you do. What a coincidence. I just sit within the four walls and silently accept any of your verdicts, Edith adds. Killian stares at Edith in silence. The young man understands that he has tarnished his honor with his own prejudice against the dark-haired woman. He clenches his hand into a fist, trying to collect his thoughts. And he succeeds. Killian says in a firm voice that he will conduct a fair investigation. Edith directs a surprised look at the young man. Killian's words sound quite serious. I swear on my honor, the boy does not take his eyes off the dark-haired woman, that I will investigate this case without any prejudice. He says that he will not allow the circumstances to develop against Edith. Also, the young man promises to keep Edith informed about this matter. The dark-haired one listens to him attentively. When Killian finishes, the girl says that he can do as he sees fit. She asks the young man if he wants to be prejudiced. The wind shakes the muslin curtains. Edith smiles sadly. In this situation, both I and Lise ended up on the list of suspects. Are you sure you can be dispassionate? Killian doesn't know what to say. Honestly, he's not sure he can put aside his feelings for the blonde during the investigation. Nothing surprising. Imperial Palace. This building really looks majestic. Several not very high towers. Walls decorated with the image of the Emperor's coat of arms the figure of a white horse above the entrance. A white carriage decorated with gold stops not far from the palace. It seems that distinguished guests have arrived at the imperial family. They are met by bodyguard soldiers. Cliff is the first to get out of the carriage. The young man is dressed in one of his best suits, a dark blue uniform with gold buttons. Cliff offers Lisa his hand. The blonde also looks incredible. Her lush, soft purple dress is perfectly combined with a necklace with purple stones. The girl gets out of the carriage with Cliff's help. Suddenly, someone calls out to Liza. Finally, you've arrived! A girl with short purple hair approaches the blonde. She is dressed in an elegant suit consisting of white pants and a dark blue jacket. This girl is a princess, sister of the emperor. She waves to the blonde. How long has it been since we last met, Lisa? Princess Catherine Iberia is the emperor's only blood relative, four years younger than him. She is known as the most selfish princess in history. It is the wild beast of the Imperial Palace, which extends its claws before it opens its mouth. By the way, she is the only aristocrat in the Empire with a short haircut. Princess Catherine is the terror of the palace. She even wears breeches to official ceremonies, arguing that dresses annoy her. 
Even the emperor himself came to terms with such a statement. Well, let's learn about this girl not from gossip, but from our own observations. Lise bows to the princess. Greetings, your highness. Catrin asks the blonde why she does not address her by name. The girl's eyes twinkle and she leans over to Lisa. During the last visit, you promised to come in a month, so I came to meet you. The princess asks if the blonde has grown cold towards her. It should be said that Catrin behaves benevolently. And this is confirmed by the expression on the princess's face when Cliff addresses her. The guy puts his hands on the blonde's shoulders and asks Catherine to stop joking with Lise. She's embarrassed anyway, says the young man in a calm but serious tone. The relationship between Cliff and Catherine is quite strained. The princess was once in love with this guy, but he chose Lise. However, the princess is not offended either by him or by the blonde. After a short conversation, Catherine kindly escorts Lise and Cliff to the palace. The princess asks the couple why Killian didn't come with them. Edith smiles. Killian got married. He couldn't leave Edith to see you. Oh, sure, recalls the princess. She was not at the wedding of the youngest son of the Duke and Edith, but she heard about this event. Cliff says that the relationship between Killian and his young wife can hardly be called a marriage. He perceives all this as an ordinary political game between the Ludwigs and the Regelhoffs, in which Edith and Killian are just puppets who have to play the role of happy lovers in public. The princess frowns. So you came to discuss this, Langston and Regelhoff, those hideous names. Catherine's dislike for these families is understandable. The Emperor's sister is well aware of the dirty plans of Langston and his followers. Cliff says that Edith is dumber than he thought. Catherine replies that she is not interested in it. A bodyguard dressed in a white and blue suit approaches the aristocrats and the princess. He bows to her highness and guests. The Emperor awaits you. A member of the Imperial family hates political talk. His majesty must be very upset, Cliff jokes. The princess rolls her eyes. Are you getting ready for a scandal? Cliff ignores this question and starts to say something about the situation in the country. The princess puts her hands on Lisa's shoulders and pulls the shocked blonde towards her. Catherine orders the boy to shut up. Lisa and I are going for a walk, so discuss politics with my brother, says the princess in a tone that does not tolerate objections. But Cliff is not going to drag Lise to the emperor. He understands that blondes, most likely, will be bored hearing about political marriages. The guy waves to the girls. The princess tells the blonde that this time she will show her a new horse in the stable. Cliff smiles out of the corner of his mouth. Sounds interesting. Parabach recalls a recent conversation with Killian. Then Cliff was returning from his father's office and saw his brother in the corridor. Killian looked annoyed and upset. He told Cliff he had a headache. The brother offered him to go with him and Lisa to the Imperial Palace. What? Killian sharply turns his head in Cliff's direction. The young man asked his older brother why he was going there right now. He approached Cliff, who was surprised by the question, and said through gritted teeth, The investigation is not over yet, and father is already sending the report to the palace? The duke's eldest son was about to say that the actual purpose of the visit to the palace was somewhat different, but he was distracted by Renan. As far as Cliff can remember, it was the first time Killian had reacted like this to his father's order. Knight, a little girl with black hair, our main character, lies on a narrow, cold hospital bed and quietly cries. Suddenly someone's voice is heard from the next bed. Does it hurt badly? Out of surprise, the girl opens her eyes wide, filled with tears. The black-haired man abruptly sits down on the bed and turns his head to the side. Mala sees a bald girl with big, sad eyes. This is Ed. She shares one ward with a black-haired woman. Mala apologizes and asks her neighbor if she woke her up. Ida sits down on the black-haired woman's bed, rolling the dropper to her. No, I didn't wake you up. Are you crying because you are afraid to die? Mala lowers her head and says that it is. She is afraid of dying because of a cursed disease that is slowly but surely eating away at her from the inside. Blackhaired says that she would rather just kill herself so as not to suffer. Ed's eyes widen. What? The girl had seen many sick children, but she had never heard one of them say such a thing. The black-haired woman explains that her parents are very worried about their daughter's health. The girl remembers how her father talked to someone on the phone about her daughter's illness a few days ago. The little one's older brother, who can become a bone marrow donor, told the parents that he did not want to do so because of the possible pain during the operation. Although the black-haired man was upset by his brother's behavior, the girl understands him. Any operation is always a risk. Tears again appear in the eyes of the girl. That's why I want to die now. Ada smiles softly. Well, we can't have everything we wish for, can we? Then the girl tilts her head to one side and says that she is jealous of the black-haired girl. At least she has a relative with the necessary bone marrow, 
but Eddie can't find a donor. The girl says that she really wants to live to be 20 years old. By that time, she will have grown long hair and will braid it into a somewhat unkempt ponytail every morning. Eddie will also paint her lips with bright lipstick and walk around the city for several hours. The girl's story made an impression on the dark-haired. She is surprised that despite her long stay in the hospital, this little girl, whose arms are covered with IV scars, can still dream. That night, the black-haired woman completely rethought her life. The tears on her cheeks dried little by little. The girl realized that she had the same dream as Ed. Ada, who with a sad smile, said that she would be able to withstand all difficulties. Ada, who revived the desire to fight and live in the dark-haired girl. Let's return to our Edith. The girl wakes up in tears. Everything we saw a few minutes ago was just her dream. Dark-haired sits on the bed. The image of Ada does not leave her head. As far as the girl remembers, her roommate received a bone marrow transplant and apparently fulfilled her dream. The dark-haired one purses her lips and says to herself, Okay, I can handle anything as long as I'm alive, and I just don't have the right to give up. After the girl changed her views on the situation in which she found herself, it became easier for her to live. Now the dark-haired man is sitting in his room and admiring the roses in the vase. House arrest is a punishment, but for Edith, who does not really like crowded places, it is a real rest. She enjoys her alone time. Today, for example, Edith arranged an impromptu tea party for herself. After a cup of her favorite drink, she's going to have a delicious dinner. But someone decided to interfere in the girl's plans, and that someone is Killian. The guy visited the dark-haired woman for lunch. The maids quickly serve hot meals and snacks. The young man looks at Edith. The girl snorts and asks Killian what the purpose of his visit is. By her behavior, the dark-haired girl shows the boy that she is not very happy to see him and even at lunchtime. Killian raises his eyebrows but doesn't answer. He seems to be trying to find the right words. Today he is not doing very well. The dark-haired man turns to the young man a second time. Killian? He finally says, I don't have time to talk. Edith, of course, does not like such a rude answer. The girl angrily replies, Then hurry up if you are so busy. Killian wipes his mouth with a white napkin. The boy does it so slowly that it seems as if he wants to make Edith angry. Then the young man takes a piece of bread from the plate with snacks. Dark-haired understands that Killian is in no hurry to explain something and is just playing on her nerves. Edith barely restrains herself from making a face at the young man. Killian dips a piece of bread into the soup. Does he think that if he is handsome, then everything is allowed to him? Says the girl in her mind. She can't believe that it's all about a slim body and a pretty face. Can nice people really act like kings and get nothing for it? Edith remembers an anonymous story from a dating site she used to browse in a past life. One woman wrote that she could not be angry with her husband only because of his beauty. The dark-haired one closes her eyes. Why would I think of that in a situation like this? She mentally apologizes to the author of the novel, who decided that Edith will love her handsome husband in spite of everything. The girl exhales loudly and tries to concentrate on her dinner. She puts several pieces of baguette, cheese, and smoked sausage on her plate. The food looks too appetizing to refuse it because of uninvited guests. Edith likes cream soup the most. What a delicacy. Killian watches the girl carefully. He notices that his trick with annoying Edith has failed. She pays no attention to him. Parobach decides to get down to business. He says that the Ducal family is now carefully investigating the loopholes through which access to the documents can be obtained. Lise is also on the suspect list. What a surprise, Edith says with a clear sneer in her voice. Don't worry. Killian directs a cold look at the girl. We're not just dealing with her. Edith had already finished the soup. Killian asks the girl how she hasn't choked yet. Dark-haired says that there is no reason for this. She considers herself innocent. In addition, the soup is incredibly tasty. The girl starts a meaningless chatter. Whether I did it or not, why shouldn't I just enjoy the food? Oh, the soup is over, but the bread is left. Killian lets out a half-hearted laugh. He doesn't really understand Edith, but her behavior seems quite interesting. Dark-haired is absolutely not nervous. She is focused on lunch. Edith's hand reaches for a plate with some kind of food. The girl wonders what it is. An extra portion of food, explains the dark-haired man, in case there isn't enough food. Edith removes the lid from the plate and sees mushroom cream soup. The dark-haired girl would have happily eaten that extra portion right now, but Manners told her to offer the dish to Killian as well. Fortunately for Edith, the young man refuses girl's room. The dark-haired girl is lying on her huge bed and looking at the ceiling. When the dinner was over, Edith felt a kind of emptiness in her soul. The girl thinks how to have fun. There is no web novel in this world, just like origami. 
making figures out of paper. In a past life, the dark-haired woman was very fond of this business. Edith asks Anna what ladies usually do. The maid turns to face the dark-haired woman. If we talk about hobbies, embroidery, painting, and horse riding are common, the girl is thinking. Embroidery is a basic skill of girls in romantic fantasy. Edith is not sure that she will be able to embroider something beautiful. Still, the Count did not hire teachers for her. The girl can't draw either. In a past life, she once went to a master class from an artist, but I thought that Edith drew an elephant, but it was a puppy. Edith is generally afraid of horses. According to the girl, these toothy animals look threatening. In addition, horse riding is quite a traumatic activity. You can fall off a horse and smash your head. The dark-haired one smiles at the maid and asks what other hobbies are popular among aristocratic women. The maid says that it is now fashionable to sew clothes for wooden dolls. Parents of young ladies do not spare money for this hobby because it is useful for developing sewing skills. Also, girls who sewed clothes for dolls in childhood often become fashion designers. Edith is interested in this hobby. In a past life, the girl was very fond of dolls, but her parents could not afford to buy a lot of clothes for them. The dark-haired one asks where you can get the dolls. Anna says that parents used to make them for their children, but now there are many craftsmen who are engaged in creating these simple toys. Edith takes out her purse and asks the maid about the prices, but she says that 50,000 sen is enough to buy several quality dolls. Edith smiles at the maid. I will give you 200,000 sena. Can you buy good fabric for doll clothes? The dark-haired man allows Anna to keep the rest of the money for herself. Consider it a small prize, says Edith. But the maid is not happy with this idea. She tells the dark-haired one that she doesn't need a prize. The girl realizes that she is scaring Anna with her kindness, so she hurries to calm the maid. From the very beginning, Edith knew that it was Anna who would look after her. Despite the situation in which the dark-haired woman is, this maid, like Renan, is one of the few people who treats her well. Even if such an attitude does not bring benefits. Edith's eyes twinkle. Let's be honest, that amount isn't enough to buy off your pride, is it? She takes out some more bills from her wallet and hands them to Anna. The girl tells the shocked maid that she will be happy if she takes this gesture, simply as a sign of affection. Anna is in no hurry to take the money. Do you refuse? asks the dark-haired man. The maid feels embarrassed, but she does not want to disappoint her mistress, so in the end she takes the bills in her hands. Anna thanks Edith. A light summer breeze sways the curtain. The rays of the gentle warm sun saturate the buds of red roses. Several hours pass. Edith is sitting at her desk. In her hands is a thread and a needle. The dark-haired girl is trying to sew simple clothes for the dolls, but so far she is not very successful. The edges of the fabric are frayed. It seems that the problem is in incorrectly made seams, and Edith doesn't know how to fix it. It's not as simple as you might think. The girl frowns. She will not be able to blame her failures on low-quality materials. Anna recently brought the best fabrics and threads. Edith was just then sitting on the bed and reading some book about art. The dark-haired woman was, to put it mildly, shocked when she saw how many things the maid had brought. In Anna's hands were various schemes, boxes and boxes. The maid was the first to show the dolls. I bought them as a ready-made set of a man and a woman. It should be said that the color of the eyes of the dolls was similar to the color of the eyes of Killian and Edith. However, the dark-haired girl did not pay attention to this. Anna also told Edith about various options for patterns. The girl smiles when she remembers this conversation. It seems that Anna has become kinder. Edith is no longer so upset about the fact that she cannot sew a normal dress for a female doll. It's still a hobby, the girl says in her mind. The main thing is that I get pleasure. She looks at the dolls sitting with their backs to each other. Edith is happy that at least in this life she can enjoy rest without unnecessary thoughts in her head. Perhaps due to the fact that the girl was haunted by thoughts of wasted time, it seems to her that she is living her life only now. An hour passes. Edith examines her work. The dress looks pretty good. The dark-haired one smiles. Well, the seams are definitely crooked, but you can't see it at all from the outside. Then the girl takes the Killian doll in her hands, dressed in a classic suit, a white shirt and dark blue pants and a vest. Edith puts the dolls in a pose in which they pretend to kiss. A dark-haired woman puts a couple in love on a desk. Hmm, the girl thinks. What should I do now? Maybe try embroidering after all. Edith takes out a piece of fabric and a needle from a drawer. Suddenly someone bursts into the room. The dark-haired woman shuddered in surprise. This is Killian. He looks very angry. The guy shouts to Edith that during the investigation they found a document written in her handwriting. A large two-story house with a tiled roof. This is the estate of the Sinclair family. 
There is a tea party in one of the rooms. There are a lot of different cakes on the table. Layla Sinclair smirks. Huh? What did she do to get banned just weeks after the wedding? The girl's brother, dressed in a blue suit, raises a cup of tea to his lips and says that Edith, and they are talking about her, stole the ducal documents. The boy assumes that the dark-haired woman was in a hurry to pass on the information to her father because Count Regelhoff plans to attack the duchy this year. From the beginning, Edith was a bargaining chip. She did everything to get the information. Layla thinks that the Count has obtained the secret documents of the duchy, but her brother is quick to reassure her. Are you sure that Axel Ludwig entrusted her with the documents? Layla guesses that the young man is hinting at forged documents. The Duke thought everything through very well. If the Earl got any information, he would simply fall into the Duke's trap. Everything seems fine, but there is one thing that worries Layla's brother a little. Killian's concern for Edith. The guy really hopes that the Duke's youngest son has not fallen in love with his wife. Layla's eyes twinkle and she smiles. Brother, in that case, should we tell the Duke that Edith is just a coin? This is a great opportunity to rob him. However, the young man does not think this idea is good. He leans back in his chair and says that there is no hurry. Edith will do everything herself. Liza is more worried about the man. Because of Killian's wedding, the likelihood of Cliff and the blonde's marriage increased. These words angered Layla. The girl hits the table with her fist. Out of my mind? No, that idiot is not going to be Cliff's wife. The Duke's eldest son will most likely become the next Duke. And if Lise becomes his wife, she will get unlimited power. Layla's brother says that this is why Liza is a problem. In addition, the Sinclair family concluded a marriage contract with the Ludwig family. After some time, Cliff is to marry Layla. If the young man still chooses Lise, the contract is annulled. Layla wonders what to do to prevent Cliff and Lisa from getting married. The girl offers her brother to use Edith Regelhoff. The old man crosses his arms over his chest. What are you talking about? Layla explains that if Lise is enchanted by Killian, then Edith, of course, will be jealous of her husband and will do everything to harm the blonde. Layla smiles evilly and says that in this way they will kill two birds with one stone. They will get rid of both the hated Liza and the fool Edith. Let's go back to the dark-haired one. As we know, the girl was quietly embroidering something until an angry Killian burst into her room. The frightened girl raises her eyebrows. Killian, why don't you get out of here with those manners? The young man repeats that during the investigation they found a document signed by Edith's handwriting. The old man tells the girl that she will soon be brought to the Duke. What do you say to that? Killian waves his hand. The dark-haired man behaves surprisingly calmly. She says that someone is just trying very hard to set her up. Killian is even more indignant. Didn't your roof sometimes leak? Are you joking or do you really despise the Duke? The girl turns her head to the side and smiles mysteriously. Edith thinks she has too much to do to just disappear. In the original, the Duke gave up his claims. Killian fixes her hair and asks Edith what's going on in her head. Yes, he once again admits to himself that he does not understand this girl at all. Someone walks into the room. Excuse me for interrupting your conversation. Edith looks towards the door and sees Renan. The blonde informs Killian that the Duke is waiting for Edith. The man casts a somewhat angry look at the dark-haired man. Edith hopes Renan doesn't think she's a criminal. A girl would really hate to lose a person who treats her normally. Edith lowers her eyes and smiles sadly. She stands up and walks towards the blonde. Without turning to Killian, the dark-haired man asks him to relax his face. Aren't you glad you found all the evidence? She asks. The girl asks Renan to take her to the Duke. Killian turns to look after his wife. Office of Axel Ludwig. The man asks Renan to hand Edith some papers. This is the order list the arms dealer got from Count Regelhoff. The man tells the dark-haired woman that the document is written in her handwriting. The girl picks up one of the papers. Someone copied my writing. The Count sighs loudly. Edith, this situation is most likely your father's fault, so I will not punish you. Killian and Cliff look at the dark-haired man. None of them speaks out against the father's decision. However, Edith is going to prove that she didn't do it. The girl stands up and says that it is not about punishment. She approaches the Duke and puts the papers on his desk. Didn't I tell you that this case is connected with my life and honor? The dark-haired woman pushes the documents to the Duke and asks him to compare these papers with those she has systematized. The girl says that she does not draw tables as terribly as in a fake. It looks more like the scribbles of someone who has never heard of this type of paperwork, Edith adds. The Duke tells the girl that she could have drawn the tables so crookedly on purpose. The dark-haired man examines one of the papers. The girl asks the Duke why she needed to draw something on purpose. If Edith thought that she would be discovered, she would not have written everything in her handwriting. 
The Duke and his sons ponder the girl's words. She says, if you look closely, the handwriting on the document is slightly different from hers. Edith asks permission to bring her diary. The girl wants to compare the entries in the diary with the documents she allegedly made. The Duke orders Renan to bring the girl's diary. The blonde bows. Yes, Your Grace. Edith tells the blonde that he can ask Anna to get the diary. Renan quietly, so as not to disturb the interrogation, leaves the office. The girl looks at the drawing of the tables in the documents. It looks rough. The person who did it definitely does not know the principles of their creation. It would make sense if Edith's handwriting was forged by someone whom Edith taught to draw tables. For example, Duchess or Lise. But did they have a reason to go so far? There are many ways much easier than this. Edith is thinking. It seems to the girl that something is wrong here. It feels like someone is pushing her down the path of the original story. Renan brings the dark-haired woman's diary to the Duke. Axel and his sons compare the handwriting in the notebook with the handwriting in the documents. Edith picks up her diary and confidently tells the Duke that there is still a slight difference in handwriting, no matter who said what there. To understand this, it is enough to compare individual letters. For example, Q in a notebook is different from Q in papers. Edith puts her hand on her belt and says in a triumphant tone, So this is a document that someone has very neatly forged. Your Highness needs to catch the mole. The Duke puts his hand to his chin. He picks up the forged document and examines it carefully once more. The man must admit that Edith is telling the truth. The handwriting is slightly different. The office door opens. Lise enters. She greets the Duke. Killian doesn't understand why the blonde is here. His father says that he called Lise. The man tells the blonde that four years have passed since she started helping the Duchess with her work. Duke reminds Lisa that last time she was talking about tables. More precisely, about the fact that Edith taught her to draw up documents in this way. Lise says that everything was like that. The Duchess was delighted to learn how effective this method was. Herzog asks who else knows how to work with tables. The blonde answers that young Mr. Killian and Cliff know about this method. Lise says about herself that she did not understand anything. Edith freezes in place. So, concludes the Duke, at best only Edith and members of my family can draw tables. Killian's eyes widen. The guy is worried. Lise timidly tells the Duke that it was. It is unlikely that the Duchess told her other assistants about this method. The blonde puts her hand to her chest. By the way, can I ask, why do you ask these questions? Edith directs a surprised look at Liza. The dark-haired man was interested in the blonde's words that she did not understand how to work with tables. Edith thought that Lise had dealt with this perfectly. The Duke tilts his head to one side and tells the blonde that it doesn't concern her. Thanks to you, we figured it out, says the man. And now go. Lise quietly leaves the room. Strange things happen, Edith, says the Duke. The girl lowers her head. The dark-haired one looks angry. She almost proved her innocence, but Lisa's arrival ruined everything. The dark-haired one narrows his eyes. Have you come to such a conclusion, Your Grace? It's disappointing. Edith is angry not only at Lisa, but also at the Duke, who is prejudiced against his daughter-in-law. The man gives the girl a mocking smile. You mean that's not all? He wonders what Edith will come up with this time. How to get out. The dark-haired one puts his hand on the Duke's desk and begins to list the evidence of his innocence in this crime. Tables different from mine, different handwriting. That should be enough. The Duke is silent. Dark-haired casts a disdainful look at him. But you believe Lisa's words more than mine. I can't say anything else. The girl does not remember exactly how Lise proved Edith's involvement in the transmission of information in the original novel. And this is not so important in principle. Edith simply thought that the blonde would provide strong evidence. And these assumptions of Liza about the possible involvement of the dark-haired and eaten egg are not worth it. I didn't forge documents, so Liza has no written evidence, Edith says in her mind. The girl thinks about it. After a few seconds, she remembers her diary. It's in Killian's hands. The guy carefully reads his wife's notes. And the dark-haired one doesn't like it very much. She runs up to the young man and snatches her notebook from his hands. God, I wish you were reading someone else's diary. Killian shivers. The girl angrily tells the man that he has no desire to be polite to her. Killian tries to justify himself, but the dark-haired man does not listen to him. She's going to say something else to the young man, but the Duke's voice stops her. Edith. The dark-haired woman turns her head towards the man. He sighs. You are right. We really don't have any hard evidence to dispel any doubts. It seems that the Duke is not very happy with this fact. The man tells Edith that he will turn a blind eye to this incident and will not punish her. Also, adds the Duke after a few seconds. I'm canceling my probation. The girl says goodbye to the Duke and leaves the office. Killian hurries after her. 
He tells the dark-haired woman that he cannot believe her words. She clenches her hands into fists out of anger. I know. That's how it always was and always will be. The guy explains his attitude to Edith by the fact that she is from the Regalhoff family. With all their crimes, is it strange to suspect you? He asks. Edith turns her head towards the young man and flashes her eyes angrily. She says that she is tired of repeating about her non-involvement in family affairs of the Regalhoffs. The boy asks the second question. What about participating in his father's conspiracy before the wedding? Edith doesn't really understand what Killian is talking about. Suddenly, the dark-haired man freezes in place. A wave of memories covers her. Numerous frames from Edith's life before marriage begin to flash in the girl's head. The dark-haired woman not only seduced men to find out the information the Count needed, but also spoiled the parties of rich families, one of which was a family friendly to the Ludwigs. The girl insulted the children of this family in various ways. She ruined their expensive clothes, broke up their wedding, told all sorts of disgusting things about them. Edith comes back to reality. She can't understand why these memories have appeared now. The brunette feels confused. Killian drills her with a cold look. Edith's room. Killian, who had decided to take the girl out, had just left. The dark-haired girl leans her back against the door. She is tired. Still, so many events happened in one day. Somehow the Duke revoked the probation. But as expected, Lys did not side with Edith. The dark-haired man hears the blonde's voice from behind the door. Killian, are you here too? Lise excitedly asks the young man what happened. The guy turns his head towards the blonde. He didn't expect to see Lise here. Parubak thinks what to say to him. In the end, he decides that the blonde must know the truth. Edith is suspected of passing on information to Count Regalhoff. Lisa says that the dark-haired woman could not have done such a thing. Sunlight floods the corridor. I want to believe it myself, but the evidence is mixed, Killian replies to the blonde. Edith listens carefully to the conversation of these two. Why? The dark-haired woman herself does not know. She no longer hopes that Killian will change his mind about her. Edith lowers her eyes. After a few seconds, the girl walks away from the door. Meanwhile, the brother and sister continue to talk. Lys asks the young man if her words did not hurt Edith. Bilyavka believes that even now it is necessary to provide a full explanation of the situation to the Duke. Do not need, Killian replies dryly. This answer surprises the blonde. She flashes her big blue eyes and asks the boy why. The old man puts his hand on her shoulder. Father decided to forget about this matter, so I hope you won't talk about it either. The young man goes away. Lys calls out to him, but in vain. Parabok starts running down the empty corridor. The words he read from the dark-haired woman's diary are running through his head. She wrote about Killian and Cliff's training, about how she spied on them. The girl also described the beauty of her husband, his muscular relief body. From the diary, the guy learned that she likes his appearance more, and not only external. The dark-haired woman wrote about Killian's smile, which he gave Lisa during one of the training sessions. Then Edith thought she would pass out from such a beautiful sight. Killian tries to get rid of these thoughts. Honestly, he no longer feels hatred for the dark-haired woman. Some other feeling, unknown to him, appears in the boy's heart. Killian asks himself why he bullied this girl. The young man breaks into his father's office. The guy turns to Cliff, who is flipping through some book. Let's go, let's practice. The Duke's eldest son smiles. Wow. He didn't expect that his brother would want to compete with him on swords in broad daylight. The guy asks Killian what happened. Looking gloomy, Cliff says. Headache again? The Duke's younger son ignores his brother's question. Instead, he says he'll wait for Cliff at the gate. The next morning, Edith, dressed as usual in a closed floral dress with a bow at the neck, is standing near the Duchess's office. The girl quietly knocks on the door. Come in, sounds from the inside. A dark-haired man crosses the threshold of the room. The Duchess turns her head towards Edith. I was waiting for you. You had a lot of trouble yesterday. Edith lowers her eyes and says that it was not the same as difficulties, just minor annoyances. Isn't mental pain stronger than physical pain? The woman asks. The dark-haired one gives her a surprised look. After a few seconds, the girl realizes what the Duchess wants to talk to her about. Edith says that she really did not give the documents to anyone. With despair and sadness in his voice, the dark-haired man adds, I know you don't believe me, and it doesn't matter that the number of questions to me has increased. The dark-haired woman is ready to risk her life to prove her innocence in the case with the documents. The Duchess gently takes her hand. The woman looks into Edith's eyes and says words that strike the girl to the core. I believe you. The Duchess was the only person who said this to the dark-haired man. The woman smiles sadly. She guesses how hard it was for Edith all this time. 
sitting under house arrest and meeting with disgusted looks from people, is another test. The Duchess says she knows how the girl tried to help her, saw how she tried to get used to the new environment and new rules, how she wanted to please everyone. How could I not know? The woman lowers her head. I also went through this when I married Axel. It was not easy to get along with his family. The Duchess waves her hand. The woman is sure that the forgery of documents is someone's evil joke, but who exactly is behind it she does not know. The Duchess repeats what Edith believes. Edith is relieved. It came so suddenly to the dark-haired woman that she began to sob. The Duchess runs her hand over the girl's cheek. Sobbing, Edith tries to tell the Duchess the truth about her life before the wedding, but she fails. The dark-haired girl feels something cutting her from the inside. The girl plunges into darkness. A black-haired boy, a servant of the Ludwig family, runs to the parade ground. He stops the brothers' training. Young Mr. Cliff, young Mr. Killian, Lady Edith has passed out. The barbs freeze in place with crossed swords in their hands. Killian and Cliff put down their weapons and approach the servant to question him in more detail about what happened. Cliff is the first to do it. The servant explains that Edith was talking to the Duchess in her office and suddenly lost consciousness. The guy says that the girl is now being examined by a doctor. Cliff, who is no longer listening so attentively to the servant, lets out a small laugh. His brother's behavior caused such a reaction in the young man. Killian has his shirt on in seconds. The guy jumps up and starts running in the direction of the estate, Edith's room. Killilan sits on a chair next to the girl's bed. The doctor, a middle-aged woman dressed in an elegant suit, asks the boy if Edith has been in stressful situations recently. Killian doesn't answer. The guy is generally unable to think normally now. All his thoughts are occupied by Edith. He tries to understand why the girl lost consciousness. One could refer to banal overwork, but firstly, Edith was not engaged in hard work, and secondly, her face looks tearful. Loss of consciousness became the body's reaction to a stressful event, and Killian knows exactly which event. True, the boy does not understand one thing, why the defiant Edith Regelhoff, who stood so confidently in front of the Duke, brought herself to the point of losing consciousness with tears. An image of a sad Edith in a flowery dress appears in the young man's head. The girl sobs, burying her face in her hands. Killian feels sorry for his wife. He directs a sympathetic look at her face and sighs softly. In fact, the young man is very worried about the dark-haired one, although he himself cannot explain why. In general, these past few days he feels strange when he is around her. Meanwhile, Anna takes the doctor out of the room, who advised the ducal family not to overwork Edith. Killian asks the Duchess what she was talking about with Edith. You will hardly believe her words, but she claimed that she did not forge documents. The woman answers with a note of reproach in her voice. Killian, without turning his head towards his mother, says that Edith has already told him and the Duke that. The young man admits that he and his father were not sure of the truth of the girl's words. That's why I said that I believe her, says the Duchess. Killian gives his mother a surprised look. What? The woman puts her hand on the boy's shoulder and repeats, I said I believe her. The Duchess says that after these words, Edith began to cry. The brunette just wanted to thank the woman who was the first person to believe her. The Duchess suggests that trust is a painful issue for the dark-haired woman. Killian turns his gaze to Edith's tear-stained cheeks. The boy is struck by thunder. He remembers the words of the dark-haired woman that no one believes her because she belongs to the Regelhoff family. Killian realizes what he has done. The boy feels ashamed that he brought Edith to such a state with his openly hostile attitude. Killian feels even worse at the thought that he has broken his promise of impartiality. The Duchess notices that something is wrong with her son. Killian rests his palm on the dark-haired woman's bed and tries to get up. His body is shaking. The woman wants to call the doctor, but Killian stops her. The guy gets up and says that everything is fine with him. He just has a little headache. Killian is about to go to his room when he bumps into Lisa. The girl says that she came when she heard that Edith had lost consciousness. The blonde's eyes are full of sadness. She excitedly asks the young man why he is so pale. The blonde reaches for Killian's cheek. He feels a light and delicate aroma of violets. At the same time, his headache for some reason becomes stronger. The guy does something that Lise never expected. He stops the girl's hand. Something tells Killian that he is doing the right thing. Now is not the time to be nice to Lise. Killian looks into the blonde's eyes and says in a somewhat tired but firm tone that he's fine. The Duchess is surprised when she notices how her son behaves with Lise. The boy puts his hand to his forehead and heads for the exit from the room. Finally, he apologizes to the blonde for his rudeness and says that he needs to lie down for a while. Meanwhile, Edith's consciousness falls into the abyss, giving way to a black-haired student. The girl is dressed in the same clothes in which she died. 
The black-haired one looks around, trying to figure out where she is. However, the girl cannot see anything because of the impenetrable darkness. The student opens her eyes wide. Did I die again? That girl quickly rejects this thought when she remembers that the last thing she did in Edith's body was cry. They don't die from tears. A screen appears in front of the black-haired one, with a green backlight, on which it is written that Edith Riegelhoff cannot reveal her secrets until she fulfills a special condition of the third stage. The girl stares at the inscription. What? A special condition of the third stage? Black-haired does not understand what is happening at all. The girl takes a step towards the screen. Suddenly the black-haired man is distracted by a strange crack. She looks around. Here the screen disappears. The girl tries to reach out to him but is pushed back. Edith comes to her senses. The dark-haired woman abruptly sits down on the bed. The girl looks excited. Hands are clenched into fists, breathing is heavy. Hannah notices that Edith has woken up. The maid immediately runs up to her. Ma'am. Edith examines her trembling fingers. Anna tells the girl that she did not come to her senses for two days. The girl opens her eyes wide. Two days? Maybe it's because I wanted to tell the Duchess the truth about myself and my father. Dark Hair decides to test his theory and begins to tell Anna, something related to his past. The girl is stopped by a coughing fit. Mrs. exclaims the frightened maid. After a few seconds, Edith feels better. The girl smiles at Anna. I'm sorry, my throat hurts a little. Could you bring me a glass of water, please? Anna is in a hurry to fulfill the order of her mistress. Edith makes another attempt to say something about her life before marriage. The girl doesn't even have time to utter a word when something starts choking her again. Edith tells herself that she will not say anything. There are enough experiments with it. You can also die. And this dark-haired person is not needed now. The girl rethinks her new life. When she first found herself in the body of Edith, she thought that she could become the main character of a romantic fantasy, being a criminal in the plot. Dark-haired naively assumed that polite behavior would help her not only to avoid death at the hands of Killian, but also to become a good friend of the main character. The girl even thought that she might get the main male character. When Edith realized that she would not succeed in becoming the lover of one of the Ludwig brothers, she decided to simply live a peaceful life. The dark-haired woman was perfectly suited to the role of a rich daughter-in-law who refused her husband, but regardless of the girl's will, the original episodes continued unabated. No matter how Edith tried to change the course of events, the result was the same as in the original. Now it seems to the girl that she will not be able to change the story because she is not the main character of the novel. Edith Riegelhoff is a negative character in the web novel. The role of the dark-haired woman in the novel is insignificant. Her personal secrets are not revealed. She is a minor character who must die at the hands of her own husband, who one night slits her throat. For a girl, her whole life is just a measured period of time. Edith becomes nauseous and frightened by these thoughts. The girl hugs her knees and mutters under her breath, What episode will be next? Edith wants to know what she should prepare for. After a few seconds, the dark-haired man recalls the events of the original, which happened shortly after Edith stole the documents. The girl gets up from the bed, replaying the desired episode in her head. Edith, who felt threatened by the transfer of secret information to the Count, one night quietly entered the bedroom of her husband whom she loved infinitely. The girl was going to kiss Killian while he slept peacefully. In this way, Edith wanted to seduce the boy. She hoped that he would love her after that. Of course, this did not happen. Dark Haired decides not to resist fate and try to repeat this episode. And so the girl opens the door to Killian's room. Edith goes inside, hoping not to wake the boy early. She approaches the bed. The girl thinks about what Killian thinks she is. Probably a scoundrel, she says in her mind. Your hatred is caused by the fact that you were forced to marry me. It's true. Or rather, it was true until yesterday, when the young man learned that Edith had passed out from crying. But the girl herself does not know about it yet. She admires Killian. Tears appear in the eyes of the dark-haired woman. Even when Killian is asleep, she thinks to herself, he looks incredibly angelic. My favorite character, the man I fell in love with. The dark-haired girl thinks that after what she does, the boy will hate her even more. However, Edith is not going to stop. She tucks a strand of her hair behind her ear. After a moment, the girl leans down and lightly kisses the boy on the forehead. She does this because she has come to terms with her fate and because she wants to touch her loved one at least once. Now Edith feels really happy. However, happiness cannot last long, so she pulls away from Killian. The girl thinks that now the young man will wake up with eyes full of disgust. Killian does wake up. He grabs the dark-haired man's hand Although Edith expected this, she still flinches at the boy's touch. Parabach, 
not letting go of the girl's wrist, sits on the bed. He smirks at the girl. Are you so excited that you can't even play the part of an indifferent aristocrat? Edith tries to say that it isn't, but Killian's gaze robs her of her ability to think properly, and the young man does not really need her answer. He sharply pulls Edith to him. She wails. Killalan stands up and lowers his wife onto the bed. Edith stares at the boy, trying to guess what will happen next. The guy begins to unbutton his shirt. Well, you swindler of the Regalhoffs, now try to seduce me. Who knows? Maybe you have a good body, too. The young man slyly flashes his gray eyes. It was Edith's turn to grab Killian's hand. Wait. The dark-haired one asks the young man if he is sure he wants to spend the night with her. The boy freezes in place for a moment. He didn't expect Edith to care about his feelings. Killian thought the girl just wanted to enjoy the night with him. Well, Edith shatters his stereotypes again. Parabok thinks about her question. The young man believes that compared to what he feels for Lise, the dark-haired person means nothing to him. The girl is waiting for Killian's decision. She is surprised by the situation that has developed. The dark-haired girl thought that after the kiss, the boy would drive her away. Parabik puts his palm on a snow-white sheet. He takes Edith's chin with his other hand. You shouldn't ask me such questions. Didn't you come to my bedroom in the middle of the night? After these words, the young man touches Edith's lips with his lips. The girl does not immediately respond to the kiss. Killian climbs onto the bed. He takes Edith's hand. It must be offensive to you that you were just spying on me. The guy raises the palm of the dark-haired woman to his torso and says that now Edith can touch what she dreamed of. The girl blushes. She does not really understand how Killian knows about her desire, but after a few seconds she remembers that he read her personal diary. The dark-haired woman tries to tell the barmaid that he misunderstood everything, but he does not listen to her. Edith decides to just enjoy the moment. She runs her fingers over the young man's bare torso. Then again, the girl cannot believe that Killian allowed her to touch his divine body. In the end, the young man lets go of the dark-haired woman's hand. The boy asks Edith if she is satisfied. After several attempts to formulate a normal sentence, the dark-haired woman still manages to say that she liked it. Killian takes the girl in his arms. He starts kissing her shoulders. Edith closes her eyes. The brunette really likes Killian's actions, but she feels embarrassed, which makes her blush even harder. A young man touches a girl's leg. Edith begins to tremble from an excess of feelings. I must have lost my mind, she says in her mind. Morning. The gentle rays of the sun tickle Edith's skin. The girl wakes up. She smiles when she realizes she's in Killian's room. We spent the night together. The girl hears Killian's voice. When you finish heating the water, you can go. I want to be alone today. The old man tells this to the maid who has just prepared a bath for him. Killian then walks over to the bed and asks Edith how she's doing. The girl is surprised by this question, or rather because Killian set it up. The boy, without waiting for an answer, wraps the dark-haired girl in a blanket and takes her in his arms. Edith screams in surprise. The girl tells Killian that she can walk, but he does not listen to her. Killian, dressed in a white robe, carries the dark-haired man to the bath. The young man carefully immerses Edith in the water. If it's hot, don't be shy to say so. Dark-haired says the temperature is just perfect. Killian tells the girl that he remembers how she was lying in the bath the same way on their first wedding night. The young man smiles. You must like to bask in warm water. Edith tucks a strand of hair behind her ear and replies that it is. She just adores the bath. But now the dark-haired man is not interested in this, but in Killian's behavior. She thought he would be angry because Edith had taken away the innocence of his first kiss, which should have belonged to the lovely Lisa. But no. This episode is generally very different from the original. In the novel, as far as Edith remembers, the attempt to seduce Killian turned out to be unsuccessful. The dark-haired woman wonders why the boy is so kind to her, maybe out of pity. But the girl quickly rejects this idea. Killian does nothing out of pity. Another assumption appears in her head. It is that Killian decided to spend the night with her because Lise clearly made a choice in favor of Cliff. The boy, who has no idea about the thoughts of the dark-haired girl, smiles guiltily. I'm sorry for making you move so much, despite the fact that you have only recently recovered. The young man tells the girl that she needs to rest for a few days. The tenderness and softness of the young man's voice shocks Edith. She thinks that night has changed Killian. Edith holds her head in her hands, trying to get rid of obsessive thoughts about the boy. Now the girl, as you can tell from her clothes, is not in the bathroom. Edith is in her room. Anna, who is cleaning the dishes after breakfast, turns her head towards the dark-haired woman and asks if everything is okay. Edith smiles. Yes, the girl leans back in her chair. You need to gather your thoughts and analyze everything. After the night with Killian, I had a dream. In it, 
The girl is again a white student. She was looking at the screen, on which it was written in white that the special condition of the first stage was fulfilled. If I fulfilled the special condition of the first stage, then the author's rights were reduced, said the girl to herself. She began to wonder if the fulfilled condition was related to what she had seen last time. I know, no one will answer my questions, says the black-haired man with regret in his voice. But it seems that it is not quite so. The screen starts to reload. The girl does not take her eyes off him, wondering what inscription will appear now. But nothing appears. The black-haired one grits her teeth in frustration. What does that mean? 